Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum and good morning to you all. Um, if you can hear me, could you just maybe let me know in the chat? Okay, perfect. Um, so my name is Fatima Suleiman, and on behalf of um, the Minara Chamber of Commerce, I would like to welcome all our delegates and speakers to the first Technology for Everyone webinar. Um, we are so excited to have you all with us, and thank you for spending the morning with us. The idea for this webinar came about when our committee felt that we wanted to put something out um, that could help empower communities. Empowerment was really a big thing for us, and it was vital um, in creating this webinar. So after discussing, you know, we want to empower communities, how do we go about this? We soon realized that everyone uses technology to run their business um, from women who are at home with their kids and who want to make some money to healthcare professionals wanting to grow their business and everyone else in between. But the world of technology is rapidly growing and often our focus is on our product or our service and providing those services and products um, with the technological tools and aspects can be overwhelming. And that's where we come in. So our aim for today is to showcase how to use technology to grow our business, whether it be selling a product on WhatsApp or Instagram or growing your enterprise. So we have some amazing speakers lined up, um, lined up today from all around the world, and we hope that you will be able to walk away with valuable information. Okay, so a few house rules. Um, number one, please keep your mic on mute so that we don't disrupt the speakers. And number two, if you'd like to ask any questions, there will be a Q&A session right at the end. Um, so if you could please keep your questions till then and you can pop them in the chat box. Okay, so without um, delaying any further, we'll jump straight into our first topic of the day. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, today is International Women's Day. The theme for 2023 just happens to be Did It All? innovation and technology for gender equality. So needless to say, all our, our all women committee were very excited about this. We have a very, very special guest today. Um, and our first speaker who is who has just jumped on board with us um, and who has just been so uh, accommodating and is such a special guest to us is Yashmita Bana. She is the global CEO for Nechta uh, Technology Group. The group has, com has combined the most important components of the digital transformation to meet an evolving African technological revolution. Yashmita has been making strides in the world of technology whilst inspiring inclusion and diver di diversity. So Yashmita, you can take it away. So, um... I just want to tell everybody that I'm going to, I'm, I'm just saying hello so that you can see that I'm not a robot, but I'm going to put my video off because I'm sitting in an environment on a very unstable guest uh, Wi-Fi, if that's okay. And then before I put uh, my video off, you know, um, um, I got um, asked to do this very late yesterday. <laughs> but as women, you know, we arrive. And this morning, just serendipitously, my a friend of mine, as I was driving to this venue, said to me, uh, sent me a little um, uh, a note. And, and it says, acceptance means for now, this is what the situation, this moment requires you to do. So do it willingly. So I think for all of us on the webinar and for everybody that's participating and, and listening, we must all just arrive in this moment. So I'm just going to give myself a moment to arrive because I rushed into this room. So I'm going to give myself a moment to arrive. And, and now I'm here and I, I can start talking. So I'm going to put my video off if you don't mind. <clears throat> when, I, when I was speaking to Nez about, about today, you know, um, for me, today is such a significant day. 
Uh, and the best I can do is just give you my experience about why equality, but more so equity means so much to me as a woman, specifically in the industry that we are in, uh, in the ICT technology industry. I've been running my company for, for the past 15 years. And prior to this, I was actually an engineer. So I was a civil engineer. Uh, I have a master's in engineering and I worked on sites all over Africa, building mining infrastructure. And when I moved, and, and at that time, I was the only woman on site uh, doing that type of work. When I moved from engineering to ICT, my husband said to me, why, are, why do you keep punishing yourself? And um, he says that because he knows that in, when I was doing engineering, it was a very much an uphill climb for me to get the type of respect that I felt I deserved as a woman engineer in a male dominated industry. And yeah, I decided to move to another industry that is still very much male dominated. Yesterday, I was invited to a, to a VIP event with a, with a global OEM. It was a golf day. And uh, as we got into the, into the session where we were doing the presentation, there were only two women in the room. The rest of the, the participants were men. It was myself and the organizer of the event. And I, I actually commented on, on the lack of women. At the golf, there was only one woman playing golf. So that for me is very uh, biased towards men. And we're finding that just so much still happening. There is no real change happening. You know, I was, I was looking up some stats as well last night. And I saw that if we don't achieve, um, it looks like we're not going to achieve any equality by 2010. Apparently, it's still going to take something like 286 years for us to close the, the global gender gap. I mean, we'll all be, uh, we'll be all gone by then, but hopefully we can do something for our kids and our grandkids. And there should be a bigger spotlight as, our, uh, as we do in our company. So when I started this group, I made a conscious effort that I would include more women, uh, not only in, um, in roles, in management roles, but also bringing them up through the ranks. So in our company, uh, we've, we've won accolades from Standard Bank because we're the most gender empowered ICT company in South Africa. And it's not just because we employ and train women, but it's simply because we also make the environment conducive to women. You know, we found that um, in this industry, rather, you can get the woman to join and you can get them to do the courses and the university degrees related to this industry. But for some or other reason, they leave. They leave because the environment is not conducive to them working. You know, we can't forget that we are still mothers. We are still childbearers. We are still wives. We are still daughters. And I think the environment needs to be conducive, the working environment needs to be conducive to enable and to allow us to fully be ourselves, to be the mother that needs to leave at a certain time to pick up a child, or to be the wife, to be at home, to do the cooking. Because you know, even though I'm a global CEO of a company, I still get home and do my duties as a wife and a mother. And I think that is sorely missing still very much in the industry. As an example, last uh, yesterday, there was a, a dinner that went on into the wee hours of this morning, but I didn't stay for the dinner because I had to get home to my family. And, um, and, and there was no accommodation for me to interact or network with the people because that's where all the networking happens. So those type of things needs to happen still. I think the environment, while we can bring the woman up into our industry, it's the environment that we need to concentrate on on and it's the effort that we need to make as an industry to make it more inclusive and, and diverse. And what we've also seen, what I've seen with my uh, fellow entrepreneurs in this, in this uh, sector is that the more women that we bring into the sector, into our companies, the more successful we are. And that's just because of the type of authenticity and the type of attention to detail and the type of um, a dedication that women bring into that role. Last week, I went to a factory visit. We're currently busy uh, developing an um, alternative power source. And we went to visit a factory to engage them to develop this, this power, power bank for us. 
And the interesting thing that the owner of the factory said to me is 90% of his staff are women. And I found that quite fascinating, but I also found it quite empowering. And I asked him, why do you only have women and it's on the factory floor? And he says that the women have a better attention to detail. Men are easily distracted in the engineering fields. And with the woman, he has something like 0.01% failure rates on his equipment. And he's more than, uh, he, he's assured of quality products at the end of the line. And that is what the woman brings into uh, these type of STEM industries, quality, attention to detail and authenticity, which they bring of themselves to, to, to their work. So I think, um, I think from my side, that's it. I, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we do in our company, why it's made such an impact and um, why I feel that if we can include women and more importantly, if we can create an enabling environment for them to thrive, that's where we're gonna see the biggest impact. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you so much for that inspiring talk, Yashmita. Um, and I definitely agree. I think we have, well, as women, we have so many roles to kind of fill in, but we are definitely multitaskers and, um, you know, we definitely have the ability to do so. Um, our next topic focuses on how to approach digital selling. So taking the first step into starting a business is daunting, more so when it's based in the digital space. So you know you'd like to offer a product or a service, but how do you approach your, your digital selling? Our next speaker is here to help us. Alina is a digital is a, a digital transformation leader who is from Riyadh and is currently working on implementation of AI solutions towards Saudi Vision 2023 realization program. She is passionate in guiding co corporates and government entities to accelerate the adoption of new technologies to grow operational excellence, agility of processes, and efficiency in general. So Alina is going to provide some insight on how business in Riyadh has adapted to the digital move over. And Alina, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Sorry about that. We seem to be having a little bit of difficulty getting Alina. Um, so we're just going to move over to the next topic in the meantime. Um, but before we do that, I'd just like to update you about the um, program as well. So today we will be doing um, platforms and which platforms and their functions. And then at 10 past 10, we'll be diving into AI, the AI driven world. Um, but for now, let's go back to platforms. So once you have your digital business model, um, you need to know what platforms are available and how do you use those platforms to grow, to grow your business. So to help us answer these questions, I'd like to welcome Herman Ahmed. Herman started his career as a buyer at the at Giant uh, Hypermarket in 2001. And Herman then joined Malaysia Trade Office in 2003 and is currently the Trade Commissioner of High Commission of Malaysia Trade Office Johannesburg and has been so since, 2000, uh, since 2022. So Herman, thank you for navigate, uh, helping us navigate through these platforms and you can take over. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everybody. Uh, it's such a privilege to, to be here uh, for the first time uh, in uh, one of the programs that are being organized by uh, Minara Chambers. I, uh, before I started my uh, presentation for today, I would like to wish everybody 
all the great and beautiful ladies uh, in this platform uh, happy women's day uh, for today even my wife is uh, celebrating it as well so uh, i as as the first speaker i think it's it's great privilege to have this kind of uh, session so at least we can we can try to to understand eh? but uh, for this presentation i'll be i'll be presenting from the point of view of malaysian because i think it's quite unfair for me to to what do you call it to delve into the 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 digital world uh, happening in in south africa but i would like to share uh, the things that i managed to learn from the uh, asian point of view in terms of uh, leveraging this kind of tools to empower women in terms of doing business so uh, uh, i will start sharing my presentation now All right, uh, so uh, so we're going to start the presentation at, uh, with a topic of uh, which platform and their function. So the title will be covering study case for the digital marketing in, in Malaysia. Uh, everybody managed to, to view the slides? Can anybody respond? Okay, all right. So uh, let's start with the content. I'll be uh, briefing the the session with a bit of information about Malaysia, a bit of country profile, a bit of comparison uh, between Malaysia and South Africa. As you all know, that uh, Malaysia and South Africa are having a very long uh, diplomatic relationship, and we have a full full fledged office. And our uh, high commission is located in Pretoria, but uh, for my office, I'm located in Johannesburg because uh, Johannesburg is the center of uh, business uh, activities. So uh, title two will be talking about digital marketing landscape in Malaysia, what is happening at the moment, what is happening within the digital uh, marketing landscape in Asian uh, as a whole, E-commerce, how do e-commerce able to contribute to the growth of uh, Malaysian economy and uh, women entrepreneur and their involvement in uh, digital business and other challenges that we have to take into account. So uh, this is a bit of information about Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia is very much uh, uh, small in terms of land size compared to South Africa. We have about 330,000 uh, square kilometers. Our capital is quite in Kuala Lumpur, and our population is about half of uh, total population of South Africa, being uh, about 60 million contributed by uh, female population. It's a bit equal in terms of gender uh, diversification. And our GDP is at uh, 296.4 billion, uh, much uh, in terms of total, uh, South Africa will be much higher, but in terms of GDP per capita, we're going to be more high due to the uh, amount of population. And uh, at the moment, uh, we are having a bit of a problem during COVID because our unemployment rate was uh, rising at about 5 over percent. But uh, due to the recovery and uh, the development in terms of trade activities and so on, we managed to reduce our unemployment rate at about 4.61 percent for last year. Okay, we are one of the uh, our main activities in Malaysia is on on trading. So technically, uh, we are one of the leading uh, trading uh, countries within the world. Talking about export, we are ranked on the twenty fourth uh, in terms of ranking imports uh, twenty six, and in terms of trade twenty fifth uh, in terms of ranking. So there's a few development going on, and it able to to impact giving a bit of impact in terms of our uh, trading status uh, for, for this year. And uh, actually, uh, we, we, we started at a very modest kind of economy. In 1970s, uh, our total trade was only about 3 billion. But due to the, to, the, to the high manufacturing activities and industrialization, we managed to, to, to uh, what do you call that, to, to, to transition ourselves from a domestic 
uh, driven economy and agri-based kind of uh, uh, economy to a more uh, trade-related kind of uh, economy. So by 2022, our total trade already reached about 6.6.9 billion uh, overall. And uh, this is mainly uh, contributed by uh, export activities and other trading activities, which uh, mainly contributing to our overall uh, country income. And uh, these are the trade performance uh, for Malaysia for year 2022. Uh, uh, the amount of trade is 646.9, export about 3.2 billion, imports at uh, 294.18 billion. So uh, last year, we managed uh, to register a trade surplus, which is one of our main aim in terms of uh, ensuring uh, a more uh, resilient and uh, healthy uh, uh, balance of payment for our uh, uh, trading activities overall. And uh, our major market will be China. We have Singapore being uh, one of the uh, major trading partners in terms of uh, overseas trade, US, Japan, and Taiwan. And uh, by performance, uh, our our focus in terms of region will be uh, Asia region as our main uh, trading uh, partner in terms of uh, exportation and importation. But uh, still, the major contributors will fall under the uh, Southeast Asia, especially ASEAN in terms of uh, uh, intensity in terms of uh, doing trade. So by South African, uh, in, in terms of South African region, so we managed to conclude about 1.31 billion which is uh, increasing by 13% in uh, 2022. These are the products that we are exporting. I think you are quite familiar with uh, our e, &E products, palm oil and so on. All right. Mm. In terms of uh, our trade performance with, with South Africa, it's main, uh, mainly contributed by petroleum products because we have our investment in engine, but recently was announced uh, to be sold to a third party, uh, but still, in, in progress. Other than that, we are exporting a lot of uh, palm oil products and other derivatives, especially to support the smaller confectionery industries, chemical products, and so on. So let's move on to the our Malaysian uh, digital marketing landscape. Uh, what are the things that can can a South African learn, especially our uh, uh, South African women entrepreneur, how to deal with it? Because it's a current trend that has been influencing all over the world not only uh, Africa, African region, uh, world, even ASEAN was uh, one of the major driving factors that carry the, the economic forward. So in terms of Malaysia, our, uh, our digital landscape, uh, totally it's depending on the market, uh, uh, internet penetration in, in, in Malaysia, which at the, at the rate of 89.6% and uh, uh, out of our 30 0.7 million population. So uh, the internet penetration will really help in terms of reaching out to our potential customers and, and users for our products. And uh, at the moment, we have about 30.25 million uh, active social media users and accounting about 91.7% uh, of the population. This uh, social media really contribute a lot because uh, uh, for the case of Malaysia, TikTok is one of the... Uh, uh, popular, popular uh, tools that being used to, uh, especially for the small medium enterprises to conclude business and to do business efficiently, and uh, it is mainly contributed to three aspects uh, that that really drive the the, the industry forward. I mean, it's about uh, cellular and mobile uh, connection, internet users, how frequent they use internet how accessible internet uh, within the community. And uh, last one, uh, like we, we, we discussed earlier about the active social media users. So uh, especially for small micro entrepreneurs, small medium enterprises, uh, especially uh, being run by, uh, by women, you have to really look at this uh, development seriously. It's not only affecting Malaysia uh, as a country, it will affect the, the whole world uh, overall. So uh, it, it's totally depending on our behavior, especially in terms of uh, 
utilizing uh, internet development uh, apps and so on. So technically, Malaysia spend Malaysian spend about average of nine hours and ten minutes daily for every each of them. And uh, one of the best uh, options they are using at the moment is uh, video, short video presentation about products, about uh, testimonial. So these are really uh, the major factors that really drive the, the, the consumer interest and, and, and a buying trend uh, within Malaysia. Um, so uh, these are the, some of the key points that uh, we, we, we need to look at. And uh, based, on this, based from some studies that, that being run recently in Malaysia, six second video is becoming a very important tool to attract this kind of uh, interest. And these short videos are being, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, being aired or being, uh, being displayed in, in YouTube, TikTok, Bigo Live, and so on. So technically, uh, Malaysian consumers tend to use this uh, uh, social media as one of the best avenue for them to look at new products, new development, uh, promotion, and so on. So this will drive the, 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 the business even further in the future. So what are the driving factors or key driving factors that affect this new development in digital businesses? So technically, like I mentioned earlier about increased penetration or the, the high usage of smartphone penetration. So everybody tend to do online shopping by only using their handphone. And the technology is very much in supportive, quite it's more convenient. And uh, it's really drive uh, the, the, the consumer behavior nowadays. And uh, it's important to look at the payment infrastructure for those particular, uh, especially for the case of Malaysia. So the evolution really helped in terms of driving the the business further. So it's going to be a seamless experience for you to purchase online, to do payment. And I think the most key point in terms of uh, online payment will be the security uh, aspect of the transaction. So this really uh, put into huge effect for a consumer to start buying online. And uh, uh, one of the key points that uh, we managed to discover for the case of Malaysia is about the emerging middle class. So we, we have quite a uh, young population, mainly uh, new entry to job market. So they started to have a family, small family and so on. So it really drives the consumer to, to find a best alternative or cheaper solution for them to, to consume and to utilize daily. So other than that, it's about... Uh, uh, the, the technological advancement, the new uh, developed technology that can really expedite the logistic, the efficiency of delivery, uh, the seamless experience in terms of doing uh, digital business. It's through foreign direct investment. So we are, we are, we are experiencing a lot of uh, FDIs coming, especially into these areas, which really contribute to the development of this uh, particular industry. Uh, okay, so out of that, we, we, have, we should look at one of the things that are uh, very important for you to do selection, especially for the micro entrepreneurs, SMEs and so on. Because uh, nowadays, I think assessing those kind of uh, uh, the social media uh, promotional platform and others will be very much important. So from uh, a research that uh, being done in Malaysia, in 2021, it was uh, visualized that Google is one of the best avenue for you to, to advertise your product because uh, lots of Malaysians are doing search, uh, using it as a search engine to, to explore things and so on. So these are one of the tools that can be explored and be capitalized to ensure that you have visibility in terms of your product and services to be known by your uh, future consumer. Other than that, second place would be YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp, and, and so on. I think we have to look at the consumer behavior as well. Uh, it's depending on your target market. Sometimes if you are looking at a younger generation or younger consumer, then you have to opt for a new social media uh, uh, application such as Instagram, TikTok, and so on. Uh, older generation like like me for example so i'll be looking at youtube as one of the avenue to look for new information new products and and other services related 
So these are the some of the uh, what you call that key important factor for you to choose. You have to find a good uh, research which can 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 give a bit of uh, information which are the best platform for you to to uh, what you call that promote your products and services. So these are the the most used social media platform in Malaysia. I think it's everywhere around the world. Everybody is assessing WhatsApp and so on. So you can use it as a free tools to to promote your products via your your daily updates and so on. And Facebook is even though it's quite old in terms of technology and most of the users are being used by your older generation, but still considered one of the uh, uh, most effective uh, venue for you to promote your product. So you can see uh, Instagram, Force into third. We have Telegram, Facebook Messenger, TikTok, and others. So these are the things that we have to really consider before we can market or promote our products. So uh, these are the things that they, they did in terms of research, uh, how efficient uh, YouTube are in terms of promoting your product. Uh, I think it, it's one of the key things to, to look at as well. But uh, there will be such limitation and, and I think just promoting in one, one uh, what you call that platform won't be uh, so efficient. So you have to have a multiple channel for you to really promote your products. All right, so these are some other information about the, the, the brand discovery, people discover brands from which avenue, which social media, which, uh, which uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, application and so on. So still social media ads is one of the most uh, key, uh, uh, what do you call that, tools in terms of doing promotion. They have online retail sites as well search engine, TV ads, and so on. Even though TV ads is quite old, or it, it, it's considered traditional, but still in, in some market segments, still very much important. Okay, so these are the things that, that the main reason for Malaysia, the, the consumer behavior, what, what are the reasons they are using uh, social media? So this can be part of the consideration for you to, to really select the best option for you to, to, to do promotions. And uh, this is uh, the search engine and the market shares and so on. All right. Uh, so if we're talking about digital businesses and so on, we cannot neglect the fact that the e-commerce is very much important. So how we can optimize e-commerce in terms of reaching our potential consumers and so on. So for the case of Malaysia, I'm not sure whether uh, it's not available in, in South Africa because I, I realized when I was in Indonesia, in Malaysia, the, the the number of e-commerce platform available in 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 Asian continent and 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 Africa is totally different. So the top e-commerce platform, if you planning to uh, what you call that penetrate Malaysian market or you have uh, already importers in Malaysia, then you wanted to embark into e-commerce businesses. These are the main top e-commerce platform that you have to consider. Mainly Lazada, Shopee. Lazada is uh, owned by uh, Korean. Shopee is by uh, a Singaporean-based company. We have Eleven Street, Lelong.com, Malaysian-based, uh, Zalora, and so on. So the value of uh, e-commerce business for last year alone is already reaching about 9.2 billion in, uh, in 2022, which uh, I think is mainly contributed by uh, COVID. Uh, even though COVID is becoming one of the major uh, letdown in our economy, but in, in other angle, on the positive side, it, it really boosts up uh, our uh, digital business, especially e-commerce in Malaysia. So last year alone, it grows about 47% with uh, 14.3 billion buying consumers uh, goods online. So people, uh, even though uh, during COVID, it was because of uh, there's a restriction in terms of movement, you cannot really access into shops easily, so they tend to buy online. But the trend doesn't really stop when uh, the, the, the situ situation was, uh, was improving. So people still feel that buying online will be still uh, what important because you can, you can access every single uh, discounted price and so on. So it's going to be able to really help in terms of reducing your monthly spending. So for online shopping trend that uh, really affect the business is about 
uh, 90% internet user that uh, buys buy online. So they really love buying online with all the discounted price and so on. So about nine over 10% Malaysian active internet user. So this uh, uh, enabling the, the, the businesses to able to reach our mission consumers easily. So like I mentioned earlier, even though it's uh, it's due to pandemic, suddenly it boosts up the, 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 the businesses but the trend is still ongoing people still uh, favor to buy online instead of going physical and uh, again it's about increased mobile penetration and so on that really boosts up the the e-commerce business in in malaysia so what are the customer preferences that cause they love so much of buying online it's about the practic uh, practicality you 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 can avoid uh, traffic jam you can avoid paying parking ticket and so on and you didn't have the the pressure to buy immediately certain goods. You can you can have uh, what you call that the luxury of your own house, looking at it for a few days before deciding to buy things that you you really want. And again, it's about shopping promotion. It's it's one of the things that really attract consumers, uh, especially in Malaysia. And I do believe it will affect the same uh con the, the same situation as well in South Africa in terms of buying trend. So, uh, so technically in Malaysia, we have about similar, we have uh, five common e-commerce website type. It's about business to business, a direct sales kind of uh, uh, approach, customer to customer, which uh, brands uh, own a particular website and a flash sale kind of uh, website. So uh, what, what are the, the future of these industries, even though uh, COVID is no longer in the horizon? but uh, uh, for the Malaysian side, we are looking e-commerce and uh, detail businesses is one of our uh, key driving economy because we are stuck in the middle income uh, generation country. So for us to move forward and, and be a high income nation, it's through the digitization, detail businesses and e-commerce. So uh, it is expected by in uh, 2025, which uh, being one of the uh, important year for us to see the development in this industry. Uh, E-commerce payment expected to reach four billion in in uh, USD in 2025, and we are expecting growth from 2018 to 2025 overall for e-commerce about 35 percent. It's huge, and e-commerce uh, expected to reach 30 billion USD in 2025, and uh, it's going to be like uh, I discussed earlier about consumption will be driven by middle class young younger new uh, uh what you call that new workers uh, freshly graduate they were going to be the one who's driving the, the consumption in e-commerce and uh, we hope that we can reach the high income nation by uh, 2024 to 2028 that's our our main aim to to reach that kind of uh, uh achievement so what, what, what is really uh, happening within, uh, within the digital businesses and what are the, the, the involvement of women entrepreneur in Malaysia? So in Malaysia, technically about 30% uh, small medium enterprises uh, are owned by uh, women owned enterprises, SMEs, 20% of it. And uh, in terms of digital economy workforce, uh, women contribute about 35% about uh, the overall uh, contribution and uh, we really acknowledge the contribution of women uh, especially in terms of uh, nation building and economy development in Malaysia so uh, uh, from our uh, department of statistics depa uh, from the department of statistics uh, it was mentioned that about 20.6 percent of business entities in Malaysia not only SMEs are owned by by uh, women so it contributes about 5 billion in terms of GDP of the country, creating about uh, 786,000 jobs and uh, total salary is about 2.8 billion. So these are the contribution of women in terms of our economic uh, uh, development in Malaysia case nowadays. So what are the government incentives? Because uh, even though we are trying to, to put so much effort in terms of uh, increasing the the share of women in terms of uh, in in the economy but it need a bit of push from the government side so there's a lot of government initiative being initiated just to ensure that 
women can be really succeed in terms of doing business, especially during this uh, digitization era. So there's an e-commerce grant for women-owned enterprises uh, offered by Mission Government to Mission Businesses. So these are one of the tools for us to ensure that uh, small, medium enterprises, women entrepreneurs, they're not left behind. They, they can enter into the e-commerce uh, businesses seamlessly and efficiently. So we have an uh, onboarding program, which is uh, partly uh, sponsored by the government through international platform like Amazon, Alibaba, and many more uh, platform, even uh, um, uh, Asian own, uh, what do you call that uh, e-commerce platform around, uh, around the world and especially in Asia. So uh, the government also trying to bring in women in terms of initiating cross-border e-commerce because uh, e-commerce uh, in terms of Malaysia, because we, we, we have to be realistic in terms of the number of uh, consumers in Malaysia. We are slightly smaller. We are half, I think even just half of South Africa. And we will, uh, we are very much sure that when we reach a certain uh, point, it's going to be already a maximum uh, covering the, the, the overall market in, in Malaysia. So there's a, there's a high need for us to uh, go for cross-border e-commerce. We are start uh, scouting, uh, selling our products online uh, through e-commerce into Indonesia, into uh, Singapore, Brunei, and others. So these are the, the, the major development that we are looking at, not only concentrating e-commerce within uh, Malaysia alone, it's going to be covering the whole region of uh, Southeast Asia. So other than that, we have export promotion grant for uh, ladies uh, businesses, own businesses. So it's more into promotion of overseas, uh, doing product registration in other countries and so on. These are some of the government initiatives to ensure that women-owned uh, enterprises can 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 able to reap success in, in, the, in the current uh, business uh, scenario. So suitable di di digital marketing strategy. So most uh, mission companies, when they wanted to embark into digital marketing strategy, they'll be looking at these key factors about the uh, amount of uh, e-commerce transaction, the most popular avenue that we have to uh, put our promotional item, how much is our mobile penetration. We have to look at the market segment as well, how much that we can able to reach that particular consumer and so on. Uh, so it, it's it's becoming one of the key points eh, about Android, whether it's suitable for the Android uh, users alone or Apple. So these are the things, the key things that we have to look before we embark into uh, selecting the best avenue for us to promote our products. Eh. Other than that, these are the key challenges for the mission, uh, mission sectors. So basically, it's about how we can build a, a cross-border uh, digital business in, in Southeast Asian region, how we can benefit out of it, and how we can really able uh, uh, to, to really boost up the, the, the local entrepreneur and able to be benefit from the regional e-commerce development. However, we are still facing issues in terms of slow internet connection, especially in rural area. Uh, cities, I think it's going to be quite okay, no issues. It's gonna be consistent and so on. Sometimes for us to reach our 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 consumers in the rural area is quite a challenge. So we are still finding a best solution for them to to have a very stable internet and able to for, for them to able to reach out and do online transaction. And uh, yeah, it's it's coming back to the cashless payment, uh, the payment solution and whatsoever, uh, because. Uh, the, the earlier stage will be much faster in terms of adaptation of this kind of uh, solution. But when we reach a certain age group, certain uh, areas and whatsoever, it will, it will cause a bit of challenge in terms of adaptation of cash payments for that particular group and areas. So it's, it's still a key challenge for us. Another thing, uh, if you're talking about cross-border logistics and, once, and, and so on, we still we, we are having issues in terms of uh, competing efficiently with with China because China when they because I think that's one of the things that uh, South Africa had to really look at because uh, for us we allow uh, China products uh, to enter mission market via e-commerce and these are really uh, one of the big challenge uh, for the 
for the products that didn't have uh, uh, domestic manufacturers won't be an issue. But when you have do domestic competitors, so people tend to buy a more cheaper options from China rather than buying from, from our own manufacturers. So that's some of the challenge. And uh, yeah, talking about uh, the need for us to do cross-border uh, e-commerce and so on, because it's a market saturation within Malaysia. So I think that's about it, about my presentation. So I hope that it can even uh, able to influence your choice in terms of making a decision uh, in terms of selecting the best avenue or best, uh, uh, what do you call that, platform to do promotion and to, to do businesses. But I, I can assure that uh, with the robust in terms of this development, especially for the case of Malaysia, it really helped, especially for the women entrepreneur, the micro entrepreneur, because uh, during COVID, there's a lot of uh, people becoming jobless, especially uh, the ladies. So they can start a, a small businesses at the comfort of their own house. They can take care of the kids and they can do it efficiently by using all the uh, available ecosystem in, in, in Malaysia, especially through e-hailing, you can cook your food, you can sell it abroad and so on. So these are some of the things that really contribute to the market. And with that, I, I thank Minara for inviting me today. But if you are looking for any product from Michelle or any assistant, uh, please call me. I'll, I'll be here and, and would welcome you to, to do business with Malaysia, especially for halal-related products. Thank you and have a good day, everybody. Thank you so, so much, Haman, for joining us today. and for sharing your expertise. It's definitely a mind boggling um, situation to be in, to choose your different platforms. And it's amazing that you provided those numbers for us in order to make the, the correct um, decisions. I've definitely been making notes for myself throughout your talk. Okay. So I'm just going to be sharing a little update on our um, program for today. Um, I do see we have a question about that as well. Um, next, we will be going on to um, a case study with Naeem Mayat. Um, but before we do that, um, Naeem will be speaking for about 25 minutes. We will then go into the tricks and trades of the AI-driven world. Um, and that will also be about a 25 minutes talk. Um, thereafter, we will go into how to approach digital selling with the business model. So our next speaker, as I said, is Naeem Mayat. Um, I mean, once we've discussed, um, you know, the different platforms, the hows and the whats of how to run your business, we kind of have the question of, is this a viable option to go into? Um, are there success stories? And Naeem is going to share some of that with us. So um, I'm just going to jump to Naeem's page. Um, so Naeem works for um, Digital Boutique, and he is a digital strategist. Some of his notable clients are the famous Halal Goods Market, as well as AutoStyle, and he's worked on the official website for the DOH during the pandemic. Um, so Naeem, you can take it away. I see Naeem's just connecting to his audio. Naeem, are you able to hear us? Okay, we're just going to try and get Naeem connected. Naeem, are you able to hear us? While we wait for Naeem, you, are, you will be able to um, put all your questions within the chat box. And once we get to our Q&A session, we will be able to um, discuss those questions. Okay, 
So while we wait for Naeem, um, just to note as well, there will be a recording available for the, um, the webinar today. And we are hoping that we can do multiple series of technology for everyone in the future. So please forward your um, needs or your suggestions that you would like to see in the future. As we said, the reason for creating this webinar is to empower people to use the technology that's available. Um, just yesterday, I was just scrolling through Instagram and I see that Instagram has now added a new feature where you can actually purchase um, products online through Instagram without having to go to a different um, website or anything like that. So it's, you know, we, we need to constantly be updated on these things and um, going forward, we would like to do that as well. Naeem, are you able to hear us now? Uh, yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can go ahead. Perfect. Okay, so I'm, I think I'm about an hour early than I'm supposed to be, uh, but that, that's fine. So uh, thank, thank you for having me, firstly. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good morning so far. So um, the topic was social selling, right? Uh, and I've got a story to tell you. Uh, can, can you see me? Is my video on? Okay, let me carry on. If everyone can hear me uh, and tell me if you're hearing me. Okay, great. So here's a story and a half, okay? Now go back to December 2019, before COVID, before uh, the Ukrainian war, before all the crap we're dealing with right now, before load shedding, uh, a bored afternoon, and I'm sitting on my mobile uh, and, and, and just browsing for any interesting products that, that might be suitable to sell online. So I come across a, a range of jewelry, uh, and, and I, I know nothing about jewelry. Okay, so I'm like, let me let me try this, do a bit of googling and see. Listen, nobody's selling this in South Africa. Let me try it out. But remember, this is a new product. So and and I'm I'm going this you know bootstrap. There's no budget. There's no uh, professional market research or anything. So what do you do next? Social media. Uh, download a few pictures. Create an Instagram account load up those pictures on Instagram, put a little caption. Uh, hey guys, why do you think of this? Anyone interested in this product for, I don't know, 200 Rand? Uh, and I boosted it. I did spend money. I boosted it for about 200 Rand over a course of five days. And not a word of lie, in four hours, I had 200 queries. Uh, so that got me thinking, wait, you might be onto something here. And this is still, I had no website, no, no product actually, just a single Instagram post. So go back to the drawing board, import the product, bring it in. Uh, everything sold within two weeks. Uh, granted, it wasn't a huge order, it was like 30 or 40 products or something like that. So anyway, all sold out in two weeks. Um, I'm like, okay, let's get a bigger order. Let's get a hundred products this time. As luck would have it, we went into hard lockdown. I'm sure we all have fond memories of masks and toilet paper and pineapples. But anyway, uh, so everything went on hold. The good thing was that gave me time to sort of, uh, I wouldn't say regroup, but start planning a little bit. You know, I'd, Because I'm a web developer, it's fairly easy for me to build a website. So build a website, take better product pictures, I do dabble in photography as well. So that's a skill that helps also. So I, I managed to take really good pictures, um, you know, work on some decent copy, work on some uh, you know, flyers, graphics, uh, logo, you know, all the basic stuff. Uh, but you don't need, you know, you don't have to go all out. You don't need to, uh, you know, like I had a discussion with a friend last week where they, 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 we call it analysis paralysis. You know, you start a business and, 
Oh, wait, I need a business plan. Oh, before I do that, I need to register a company. Oh, I need a bank account. Oh, I need to do this. I need to, and you end up not doing nothing because you're so overwhelmed by it. You know, just, just dive right in and do it. The rest, you will get to it eventually. Use your own bank account for now. After a week, open a new one. You can do it online with FNB. Uh, you need a logo, uh, you know, hire someone. If you don't have a budget, go into Canva. It's free. Build one. I mean, it's it's they literally do everything for you. What you know, like uh, uh, five years ago, what I would do in Photoshop that would probably take me an hour. You could probably do now in less than five minutes on Canva because it's it's everything is like uh, 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 next, next, next. You know, just fill in the blanks, put in your logo, put in your image, save it, and, and you're good to go. So, you know, the, 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 the challenges are, are not so hard in terms of technical stuff. Uh, you know, to build a website, you can use Shopify, you can use WooCommerce. You don't need to know program. You don't need to be a coder. You don't need to be a, a graduate graphic designer or stuff. Of course, that does help. You, know, you have to have some sort of uh, idea of what you have in mind and also know what sort of look and feel you want to go for. Uh, but, you know, you just dive in. So anyway, back to this business, social media. We put on the one post, went very well. After lockdown, I'd say around was it, uh, May, June, that we came out of a, of a gradual lockdown, for lack of a better word. Uh, and it really started picking up. Um, we only, at this point, I didn't even have a single business card. There was no flyers. There was no telephone number also. It's just an email address and a website. Keep running on that. We get the site up. We start boosting and promoting on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, not so much. Twitter tends to be more of a conversational thing and I suppose a complaining channel at some point. But uh, Instagram is where you want to be. TikTok is where all the cool kids are. Um, Snapchat, I, I'm personally not a fan of it. It does have its place. Uh, Facebook, Facebook Reels in particular. Uh, and, and then whatever else works for you. You know, if, if you feel you, you like to just sell over WhatsApp, go for it. If you want to only use uh, Instagram, go for it. If you want to use uh, TikTok only, go for it. But the central point of all of it was to have a website. Um, so unfortunately in, in, in South Africa, we have, we don't have true social selling where you could buy inside of Instagram because the minute in Instagram, if you add your catalog and click on a product, it's still going to go to a website or a web page to complete the transaction. Um, it is changing. I think towards the end of this year, we hopefully would get WhatsApp shopping where people can pay you inside of WhatsApp without leaving the app altogether. Uh, and that, that will eventually filter onto uh, Instagram. I mean, Meta owns them all. They own Facebook, they own WhatsApp, they own Instagram. So once it works on one, they'll just roll it out to everything. <clears throat> so it, it, it went very well. From there, um, you know, you, you got to realize also your limitations. Uh, you've got a website. How much of budget can you throw to advertising? You can only spend so much boosting posts and uh, promoting till it starts into eating into your profits. Uh, at this point, you've got to start looking at uh, partnerships and third-party marketplace solutions. Uh, big buzzword right now is take a lot. Uh, there's loot, there's macro, there's Leroy Merlin as well. Um, uh, well, Amazon is coming in probably quarter four of this year, hopefully. So how it works with these type of uh, uh, marketplaces is you just list your products with them. In some cases, you got to send it to their warehouse and then they do all the heavy lifting. They'll advertise it. They'll ship it to the customer. They'll pack it. They'll wrap it uh, at the fee. <laughs> you know, they're not going to do it for nothing. Uh, take a lot, for example, a rough ballpark figure. Uh, I'd say take about 30% of your GP is what they're going to take. So on average, they take between 8 to 15% as a success fee. So if you sold a product for 100 Rand, they're going to take as much as 15 Rand back. And they're going to take uh, between a 40 and 80 Rand fulfillment fee. That's for the delivery and packaging and uh, you know logistics. So on that 100 Rand, you're already down 15 Rand and you're down another 40 Rand. Um, if you're VAT registered, factor in your VAT as well and now your cost of your product. So you know, your, your margin is tight on 100 Rand, 
you need to have a cost of like less than 20 rand for you to really make something. However, they get say, thousands of orders every minute. Uh, you know, their marketing budget is astronomical. You, we can't compete with them. I mean, there's very few, if any companies in South Africa that can, can compete at the level of what Takelots does. Uh, Macro is coming up soon. Uh, they, they really are pushing their marketplace. Uh, they've got an interesting uh, product where you don't send goods to their warehouse. So if you get an order, uh, you book it all through the system, they will send a courier to pick it up from you and take it to the customer. So there's no warehousing and it's slightly cheaper as well. So, so the, the idea is um, you, you're gonna advertise on your WhatsApps, your Instagrams, your TikToks, um, your Facebooks, and maybe your Twitters to some extent. Uh, people are gonna click and then you're giving them the option. You, you know, you're not just saying, okay, go to my website or um, you know, the one thing I personally have a gripe with is DM me for a price. Uh, you know, be, stand by your product, have confidence in your product, put your price out there. Somebody is competing with you, so what? You can compete to them on service. You can compete to them on a variety. Um, you know, so try and put your prices up front. Don't, don't, don't put the DM for price. Uh, maybe you have your reasons for it. I personally don't like it. Uh, then you're giving them the option. They can either order through directly through your DMs, through your WhatsApps, through your, um, you know, your, your website itself, or they can go via a third party. If, if they've got e-bucks, for example, they might buy it through uh, take a lot, or maybe they want to do a cash on delivery option. Maybe they, they unbanked. Um, in, in, in the product I'm, I have, I'd say about 30 or 40% of the customers are unbanked. They don't have bank accounts. They don't have physical addresses. Um, you know, they cash only. They own, if, if it wasn't for them ordering on take a lot, there's cash on delivery, they would then uh, go to the website, see the product, then go on to uh, WhatsApp, send you a message with a screenshot, and then you'll send them bank details. They'll go with that amount into a bank or an ATM, do a physical deposit, uh, then WhatsApp you or send you a message over Instagram. So the, the lines are very blurry. They, you know, your conversation might start on Instagram. It might conclude on WhatsApp or it might start on WhatsApp and conclude on your website. So the, the idea is to, you know, I think the buzzword right now is omnichannel. You have to be on all your channels all the time. Uh, and if you've got a retail store, it's even more of a challenge. But, but um, you know, that's that's the tech. It does make it easier for you. Uh, you know, at, at, like 10, 15 years ago, to, to build a typical online store, before the days of Shopify and, and, and WooCommerce was mainstream, you would have to shell out anything upwards of 20 to 40,000 rand for something basic, basic, basic. Uh, and then it just goes higher and higher and higher. Um, nowadays, go on to Shopify, 300 bucks a month, you're up and running. Uh, go on to WooCommerce, free of charge, you're up and running. Uh, and, and, and it's not difficult. They've got video tutorials, they've got guides, they've got templates. Uh, obviously, there are stuff where you would have to pay for extra features. Maybe you want uh, uh, an abandoned cart notification or um, some sort of synchronizing with your... Um, with your QuickBooks or, or things like that there. But, but those are just your, your, your add-on stuff. At the basic, basic end of the day, you have your catalog, you have your payments, you have your products. You just got to now push it out and, 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 and you know, promote it to your, to your audience. Uh, <clears throat> back onto the socials. The, you know, when I told you I boosted that, uh, that product for 100 rand, it wasn't just a random boost. I just loaded the picture, boosted, throw some money. Uh, there was a little bit of thought that went into it. Um, the beauty with uh, Meta products, and, and, and with Meta, I mean uh, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, Instagram, they, they give you a, a huge trove of information in terms of audience segmentation, where you know, if, if you're selling um, lovable T-shirts, uh, that's not going to this weekend, but if you're selling Liverpool t-shirts, you're not going to target that product at a rugby supporter. So you, you can choose uh, an audience. You could say, you know, 
young males into English football. Uh, and you could choose these audiences and demographics and interests. So you could choose people into uh, European football, English, FA Cup, uh, Liverpool, obviously, um, and then you filter it. So instead of you targeting 56 million South Africans, you would bring your targeting down to maybe eight or 10 or 15 million South Africans. But those are 15 million South Africans. We have a direct interest in your product. So the same thing is you got to try and figure out your audience, who you're selling to, who, you, who you're pitching to, and then you know throw your money into your advertising. It's kind of, you know, in the old days, you'd print flyers or you'd put an advert in a magazine. That magazine goes to, say, 50,000 readers or that flyer goes out to 10,000 people. You have no idea who read it, who clicked on it, who, who's even viewing it. Are they even the type of people that want to buy it? The beauty with, uh, you know, the digital advertising, you can calculate your ROI from day one. It will tell you, okay, you spend... 30 rand today, you received 5,000 impressions. And of those impressions, you only received 20 clicks or 30 clicks. And, and from those clicks that you got, it will tell you, you know, where did they go onto your website? Did they click a product? Did they click uh, about? Did they add to cart, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the, the back to social again, it helps you again to identify your audience. You can then you know, sort of tap into conversations uh, remember, you starting out, you knew, um, find out who the, what the trending topics of the day, are, day is, uh, who's the you know, so-called influencers in that niche, try and reach out to them, um, you know, get into conversations. Um, you know, again, back to the soccer as an example, try and post a few memes, try and uh, banter with accounts. It's not just about posting images over and over and over and posting products over and over and over. Um, like I tell a lot of people, if compare social media to going to a braai, for example, and, and you're all at this braai and you're all talking, and there's this one guy constantly saying, yeah, buy my product, I'm selling this, buy my product, I'm selling this. People will you know, get a bit annoyed with, oh, there's it, guys, we're also gonna try and sell us now. So try and get into the conversation. Uh, we've got plenty to talk about in South Africa at any given time. You know, we've got cabinet reshuffles and load shedding and ESCOM and, uh, uh, you know, sports news. And, you know, South Africans, we tend to, you know, make lemonade out of lemons. So, you know, try and find the humor in everything. Try and find a, a little bit of a lighthearted banter in products and eventually the idea is to just get your name or your brand or your logo in front of eyeballs so when people see uh, okay um after this uh, jewelry for example oh i remember this guy was talking about it and let me go and uh, check his website out and end up buying it um so again the you know you've got your site you're selling and that sort of stuff um again the social aspect helps further where you can then, uh, WhatsApp especially, is add these customers onto a, a broadcast list or you could create uh, your own little, uh, I wouldn't say community, but you could create a little group with one-way traffic where you could send out promotion specials or even, um, even tips or even you know, how, to, how to explanations. If you're doing a clothing brand, for example, you could you know, share outfit of the day type of stuff. Um, uh, you know, if there's, uh, you know, important uh, news that happened in that industry in that particular day, uh, you know, touch on to that. And, you know, you, you've got your phone in your hand, you've got, you know, a huge audience at your disposal. Uh, just make it count. <laughs> show, show them, uh, you know, show them your expertise in that product range. And, and eventually it starts growing and growing further. And, and you know, one thing leads to another. And, you know, like, like I was, I was telling uh, the other speakers yesterday with one of the reasons why I started this online business was literally out of, literally for fun and games. I had no intention to grow this to a six-figure company. Uh, it, it was, listen, you're building sites for clients. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is and build something for yourself and see how it can, um, you, know, if, you know, practice what you preach or dog fooding is the term we use in the tech industry. Uh, and so everything that I kind of learned, I'll put onto my side and everything I'm gonna experiment with, I'll also use on my side. 
Um, and the benefit is I'll know what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and then I'll kind of pay the school fees myself. And, and then, you know, so the other guys don't have to make that mistake. Uh, so like, yeah, you maybe, maybe you decided uh, I'm going to pay someone to buy followers on Instagram. Big no, no, don't ever do that. Uh, or how to set up a, a bot to auto reply queries. Um, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of like from a client side, a lot of clients either don't know about it or they, they just think it's, you know, this is something for like these big enterprise clients. We don't have a budget for that. When, when the truth is far from that, uh, you know, you, 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 if you've got a Facebook page, you've already got a chatbot enabled on your Facebook page. You literally just got to go into your page settings and configure your questions and answers and it's done and it's free. Um, if, if, if uh, again, I'll, I'll bring up Canva again, you don't need a Photoshop, um, uh, you know, expensive license. That said, Photoshop is only $10 a month. So if you, if you want to go that route, it's, it's $9.99, it's not a lot of money. Or go to Canva. Canva is free. I'd recommend going for the paid one, which is about, I think, 1500 in a year for up to four users. So you can share it with some friends. Uh, and that will, you know, take your branding and your advertising to a whole new level. You don't have to, uh, they'll give you stock photos, they'll give you logos, they'll give you fonts, uh, carefully created designs where you literally just got to slat in your pictures and change the text. Everything is done for you. Uh, and the nice thing is uh, a lot of these, these programs speak to one another. So from Canva, you could go directly and post into Instagram without even logging into Instagram. Straight from Canva, send it to my Instagram or my Facebook page, or from Instagram, you could send it to Facebook and vice versa. Uh, so the idea is, you know, they all go hand in hand. There's no one single social media channel or, or service that, that would be your golden, you know, your silver bullet that's gonna, uh, that's gonna do everything for you. Um, so, once you, once you start, you know, you got your audience um, and, you know, accepting payments is always a challenge. So selling over social media, there's a huge trust issue. People, you know, they're dealing with a stranger. They've never met you. They're only seeing your Instagram. So try and build up your trust. Uh, put contact numbers. Uh, if you have a physical address, put a physical address. Not necessarily, um, um, you know, convince them. Why should they buy from you? They don't know you from above. So, um, and, 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 and unfortunately, there's a, there's a fair amount of scammers where we've all been on Facebook Marketplace and we've all heard stories of, you know, people give me my deposit and I'll give you your products and they disappear from it. So <clears throat> consider, consider where they're coming from also. They also have a concern. People work hard for their money. They don't want to just throw money at random strangers and see it disappear. So, if you are going to sell, uh, highly recommend signing up with a payment provider. Yoko is one I personally use. Uh, it's free of charge. You sign up, you just need your, literally your ID number in a bank account. And within five minutes, you're up and running. So the nice thing with Yoko is you could send uh, somebody a payment link. You can WhatsApp it to them. You can DM them on whatever. Um, and they can click that link and do a payment in their on their own time. And the payment doesn't have to only be credit card. They also do instant EFT. So if they don't have a, a, a card, they can do an EFT. Obviously they do need a bank account for that. Um, and Yoko's fees is not too bad. Uh, it's between 1.5 and 3.2%, I think, which I think it's a fair, fair fee for the service they're providing. Um, the beauty is if, you, if, if a customer has a trust issue, convince them to pay with a credit card online, pay you, you'll get your money within the day. If there is an issue, uh, you as a customer have six months to dispute the transaction. So if you, know, if you bought something and they didn't send it to you, you've got six months to go back, go to your bank, fill out a form and you will get your money back. I've did it myself. Um, so you know, with that, again, people are hesitant. They don't, they're not gonna just, um, you know, send your DM, I'd like to buy this. And then you're gonna send them uh, a message. Yeah, here's the amount, here's my bank details. Um, <laughs> I wish it was that easy, but it's not that easy. There will be a back and forth going between the two of you. Um, and you're gonna have to convince them that you are, uh, you know, 
you're not some scammer out to steal their money. Uh, and you also have a responsibility to be upfront to them, tell them how long delivery is gonna take. If you don't carry stock, for example, maybe you drop shipping yeah, and, and drop shipping means you don't carry stock. You get an order, you pay your supplier and your supplier ships it to that customer. Uh, be aware of the delays. You know, it might take a day or two for you to clear the payment, another day or two for the supplier to clear the payment, and another day or two for them to process it, and maybe a few days for delivery. So you're looking at a week to two weeks. Don't promise the person two days delivery. And then after that, you know, uh, you're going to break that trust uh, and then deliver it after two weeks. Because it's not just that one person uh, you've broken a trust. Remember, they found you on social media they can very quickly cancel you on social media. And, uh, and, and that's pretty much, uh, you know, you exiled once that happens. So, you know, whether you're selling on, on your social channels or your website or face-to-face -face or through DMs, um, you know, be honest, be authentic, give your, give your prices upfront, give the deliveries upfront. Um, you know, don't, don't, you know, manage your expectations. Don't promise the world and deliver crumbs. Uh, you know, know what you're selling, know, you know, tell them the benefits, the advantages, as well as the disadvantages, if any. And, and, and you know, customers are grown-ups, they need to make their own minds up. Um, so you just got to help them and, you know, push them in the right direction to uh, make your mind up. I don't know if I have more time or if we have any questions. Mohim, we actually do have a request for you. Um, sure. If you could please touch on social setting in respect of services. Um, so with services, it's, it's a different uh, beast altogether. So with social selling and services, uh, you have a lot to, to pitch in, in a way where you're not just selling a product, you're selling actual services. So you have to, uh, you know, try and on your feeds as in terms of advertising, try and do things like case studies, uh, ask me anything days, the AMA is the word on Reddit. Uh, so give out a little bit of uh, free information. Say for example, you're a, a social media a community manager. You know, your job is to post and manage people's social accounts. Uh, the general thing is you're gonna want to advertise why are you good at that? Uh, give some real world examples. Say, listen, I, I'm handling this client and you know, we took them from zero to hero in three months. And we can offer, uh, you know, these are the success stories. Then, uh, you know, depending the industry you're in, you're going to have to keep up to date with, uh, you know, current affairs, trending topics, and then share that in turn on your feeds. Uh, and, and not necessarily on your social channels. You, you're obviously going to put it on your Facebooks and your Twitters and your Instagrams, but uh, build up an email uh, following, uh, a newsletter. That's gold cool because... Uh, you know, the thing is with socials, the algorithm dictates where you're going to show. Uh, today, Instagram is going to push you to the top because you spent a couple of hundred in boosting. Tomorrow, they're not going to, they're going to shadow ban you because you've not spent anything. Or maybe, you know, the topic of the day is something totally different to what you're selling. So use your social as a tool, but I wouldn't say rely on that primarily. Keep that as part of your arsenal and then build up from there use that, run a competition or, um, you know, but capture people's email addresses and capture their contact numbers, their mobile numbers in particular. From there, you could put them on a little database, uh, either on emails or an SMS database. And whenever you share something new, send out an email, send out a, a bulk SMS or a WhatsApp broadcast. And, and, and that kind of works. Uh, selling services on social is a bit tricky. Um, because with a service, there's a lot of things that go with it. Like if it's a subscription, um, you know, payment plans, TNCs. So generally you, you, you're gonna use a social as a, as a lead generator. You're gonna get your contacts from there. Once you got the details, then it's, you know, one-on-one -on -one time, pitch your services to them, answer the questions, get their requirements. And, you know, and then that whole uh, service provider client dance continues till, Till you you know sign your agreements and your contracts um so so like social selling services versus products is very very different where the products is they could very well just dm you uh okay how much is this uh, i'd like to buy it go to my website click click buy it. tomorrow they've got it done services is more nuanced than that uh, and remember they're not just buying 
a once-off item. They're probably buying into your service. So they're going to be dealing with you for the foreseeable future. <coughs> so, so keep that in mind where you might not necessarily sell directly on social media, but you definitely build up your leads and your and your and your customer context through social media and then build up from there and take it forward and and uh, and grow it from there. Uh, any other questions? Naeem, there are a few questions. Um, <clears throat> do you want to maybe take them a little bit later when we do our Q&A session and then we can move on to the next speaker? Yeah, I'm easy. Okay. If they're easy questions, I don't mind. If they're hard questions, then I'll ask. <laughs> okay. Up to okay. okay. So Dennis would like to know, um, he says, Salams, Mr. Mayat. I'm an IP law specialist with an AI background, seven month short course. Um, what does it take for web development? Uh, well, the AI is going to replace you very soon and me very soon. <laughs> but web development, uh, you know, if you want to DIY it, go on to wordpress.com, go on to Wix, go on to Square, similar sites, um, pretty much free of charge. Uh, but remember, free of charge is not necessarily cheap. Uh, you, you, you're going to have to spend a little bit of uh, money or time. Uh, if you don't have the time to do it yourself, then obviously you're going to spend money to hire someone to do it. But there are plenty of tutorials. You can literally go onto YouTube and see a person build a site from zero to a complete site within an hour and follow it step by step. So I, I'm, I'm personally a huge fan of WordPress. So that's what does it for me. There are many other open source uh, programs out there. Uh, like I said, Wix is gaining a lot of momentum if it's e-commerce wise and Shopify is where you want to look at also. Uh, but I mean, you know, Dennis is sharp. I mean, you've, you've studied law. That's, that's, that's an accomplishment on its own. You have did a huge AI course, so you know your way around tech. Uh, my suggestion is maybe just do a short uh, Udemy or something on, on, on WordPress, you know, maximum 10 or 15 hours, and, and you'd be quite proficient. Uh, and that should get you going and you could just, you know, build a few sites, mess around with it. But the only way to learn it is to dive into it and get your hands dirty. So, you know, just uh, go and see how it goes. And, and you know, you, you're going to get stuck. Obviously, Google the problem, you'll find a solution. That's pretty much what I, I've been doing all my life. I come across a problem, Google it. Oh, that's how you fix it. And then you go and you fix it. Um, so, yeah, again, with, with a law type of, Assuming you're going to do a website as a lawyer, uh, you obviously want to showcase your services and then use your expertise and put in little uh, snippets of uh, maybe not legal advice, but maybe, you know, things that relate to the topics you specialize in onto your Instagram and onto your, um, onto your Facebook. And, and on Twitter, you maybe want to engage with other uh, legal minds and, and, you know, get into conversations that relate around your topic. Hopefully that answers Dennis. Okay. Just one more question, Naeem. Um, Avani wants to know, what is the best strategy move to convince the older business members to move towards social media marketing in their business um, who are more dependent on the traditional print advertising? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to, to change people's minds if they're very stuck in their way. But if you show them you know, concrete proof, and, and, and anyone can do that. Like you can show them, listen, you've spent, let's just guess 10,000 Rand putting an advert in a magazine. Ask them how much of, uh, what was the ROI? What did they get back? Whereas if I put 10,000 Rand in a Google shopping campaign, which will automatically feed onto other channels and maybe split it into some social channels, and I can guarantee you will get at least X amount of visitors to your website. Uh, and based on that, they will they'll get their sales. Uh, a lot of them are also hesitant. A lot of all the businesses also, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, also a lot of unscrupulous people. They also get taken advantage of them. So they, you know, they, they do put a lot of walls around themselves. So give them give them a short trial. Give them a bit of freebies. Help them out here and there. Uh, they they uh, they also are scared of change. 
So give give them a you know throw them a, a throw them a bone here and there. Uh, not everything has to be paid. Do it as a favor, uh, and they will see the value in that. And then eventually they will uh, you know turn into a paying client. And and if they still can't see the value in that, and if they're still not willing to you're going to have to just cut your losses short. I mean, if, if a company is happy to pay, for example, 20, 30,000 rand on a print advert, but it's not even considering anything on social or digital or online, um, I don't know, they, they're going to have a very rough time going ahead. It's, it's, they're going to have to switch to, to digital uh, sooner rather than later. I mean, there's, there's people I know that have cut out all print advertising. They've not spent... A one rand since 2020 on a single print ad, but they've moved the entire budget onto digital. Uh, and the result was uh, their turnover went up four times over. So, you know, that, that alone should speak for itself. And there's thousands of case studies out there to help you prove that. Uh, you know, go on to websites, go on to, uh, uh, you know, blogs that will give you uh, digital ad spend. Um, you know, use use companies like like Macro, for example, or Take a Lot, or um, and and use companies that didn't listen, and and now they are in problems. Uh, Blockbuster in America comes to mind, uh, but yeah, you know, long story short, you're going to have to prove to them why digital works. Do a little bit of a sample campaign or a, or a short, maybe a one month trial or something, just to show them the value of it. And once they see it firsthand. Um, especially with older people, they want to see, you know, they want something tangible that they can look and touch and feel. So that, that, that's where you're going to have to show them on a phone or on a tablet, like, look, you've shared your product, look how many, um, look how many followers or likes or engagement you've got. Let's see your sales. Did your sales in this product pick up? And they would have, or did you get a lot of queries or did, you know, that sort of stuff. And, and they will see the value eventually. Thanks, Nathan, for the eye-opening information. I'm, I had a good chuckle because I'm definitely one of those people who have been randomly boosting my business posts. Um, and so your information has definitely yeah, been... Yeah, boosting is it's quite addictive, right? It's worse than drugs. So if you be careful with that, you will bankrupt yourself. But as long as, you, as long as you're segmenting and not just you know, boosting to everyone and anyone, try and filter it down and, and narrow it down. You rather, you know, would you rather have 10 paying customers or a thousand yes, no, maybe customers, you know, that, look at it that way, you know, focus on, on, on the crowd that's going to buy from you. Definitely. Um, your, your information has definitely provided some um, smarter decision making. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. And... So we are almost at the end of our webinar. Um, we've just got two more topics to touch on. Um, so we'll be jumping into the AI, the AI world. Um, next up, we have Nazarene Ibrahim. Um, she's a very special person to us. She was a key person in bringing together today's webinar and we've sort of twisted her arm to be a speaker today. And the reason being is because Nazreen is um, a media and communication specialist with a keen interest in AI. She has participated and, and hosted at Global AI Summit 2022 and AI Expo Africa in 2022, 2021, um, just to name a few. So we thought who better to discuss tools in aut to automate everyday parts of your selling journey and I feel very honored to introduce you to her. Nazreen, you can take it away. We unmuted. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, thrilling to see the number of attendees on this webinar today. Uh, when we conceptualized it as a team, uh, a lot of the credit goes to Fatima, Suleiman, Amina Hanif, and Dania Hanif on the call. Uh, who are in the background. I am the chairperson of the SMME committee at the Minara Chamber of Commerce. So it's a key focus for us to be able to bring you uh, uh, not just trending topics, but also um, ideas or areas of interest that really fundamentally make businesses work. 
And when putting together this technology for uh, for everyone webinar, the name was also quite important, as is the day, the theme of the day, which is International Women's Day. So an all-woman team putting this together uh, really just added that uh, element of uh, different conceptualization and understanding. And I remember Yashmita's note this morning uh, about a gentleman who talked about hiring women employees on the floor of their factory, saying that they had better output. Now, I, I respect our gentlemen on the call very much, but I know they would agree with the attention to detail from a woman's perspective, which is why we're talking about AI tools for marketing. Because I know if a lot of you know about the tools associated with uh, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence has long been a buzzword. You hear every uh, business owner, business leader speaking about it. It is probably the number one search term across media outlets these days. And AI, um, if you follow the news outlets, is a massive talking point for 2023 in terms of investment opportunities, but particularly in Silicon Valley. And we, as we know, Silicon Valley is uh, typically used as a, a benchmark or a forefront for what would be uh, investment opportunities or the next big thing to look at. I read an article on the Washington Post this morning, just to give you a lead into this topic, about why the moonshot ideas that the, the big four or five tech organizations, Google, Microsoft, um, to, and all the social companies, are not able to move on anymore, or why they're closing their labs, as they call them, because they're simply not working. Meta being one of them, close, uh, having invested a significant amount of money into opportunities like the metaverse, but not getting the uptake that they hoped. But now looking back and draw, going back to the drawing board and back to basics around the concept of search and advertising, which are their, actually their main revenue sources, right? So when we look at AI tools for marketing, um, when I talk about the subject, while I run a communications and marketing business, it's important for you to also understand or look at the understanding it as a fundamental concept, but then understanding it as a practical application. And I think this session, while we have a short time, is just to give you an insight or review into two of those areas. Uh, and as you move forward as a small or a big business, remember that business by its very nature is the act of transacting. Whether you are big or small, you're still going to apply the same principles. So always keep that in mind because your ability to use these tools, like Naeem mentioned, is there. The tools that AI allows us to use these days gives us the power very much in our hands. And the gentleman who asked the question before this, Dennis, said, do you think I have a shot at web development? Very much so. We'll look at a, a tool right at the end of this presentation called Quick Work, which is very much part of the segment of tools called low code, no code. And low code, no code is really taking any individual who has an aptitude for using a device, connecting to the internet, and as Naeem also pointed out, going through a few tutorials, very much to have the same skill level that seasoned developers, seasoned designers, and seasoned uh, strategic thinkers do. But we cannot discredit that the level of creativity that comes from those specialized fields is very much required. Satya Nadella, chairman and CEO of Microsoft, and you would all know that ChatGPT, which we're going to talk about shortly, has been all the buzz and has made headlines far and beyond since December, its inception in December with its latest version release. He says AI fund fundamentally change every software category, starting with the largest category of all, search. Now, why is this important? Well, what do you do when you get online if you need to look for something? What's the first thing you do as a, as a behavior of yourself as a human being? You go on to Google, Google's even a verb. You Google it, you search for it. Microsoft would uh, hope to God you use Bing, but unfortunately most of us use Google. Well, for them. Um, and I've heard some disturbing news about Bing's uh, ability to start reading sensitive information. Uh, hackers are using that ability. So keep that in the back of your mind as well as you use these tools. Uh, the, the, the idea for you to be safe in the cyber environment while you use these tools. But we'll talk about that in another webinar around cybersecurity. What is search? Well, search is a concept that most of the companies that we know of um, are making a living off or have built their business models around. All the engines that we are familiar with, from Google to Microsoft to all the social media platforms. In fact, TikTok is also known as a huge search platform, though we use it for an entertainment purpose. And search is pretty much uh, getting a, um, an engine to feed you all the results around a particular query that you have. And queries vary, right? Queries can be, um, what can I cook for supper today to uh, find me the nearest pizza place? So 
this is where we will understand that chat GPT comes in. So if if we can see a, a raise of hands in the, the section, I can't see it, but I'll ask my team uh, to please WhatsApp me because I'm on, a, on two different screens. Um, the number of you who have used chat GPT before, or just drop your comments in and Fatima will read them out after this presentation, uh, just to give us a view of your, your views on chat GPT. So please, I just, I see I just raised a hand. Uh, please drop your comments in on your your perspective or your interaction and experience with ChatGPT. Forbes recently reported that Meta, Canva, and Shopify are all using ChatGPT's technology to answer customer questions. The outlet also reported that Ada, a Toronto-based company, automates four and a half billion customer service interactions. They've partnered with ChatGPT to further enhance the, the technology. So the CEO there, it was interesting to hear uh, his response, Mike Murchison. He said in a in a statement. We're going all in on using large language models. And that's what ChatGPT is, right? The focus area for this year for everyone listening in is large language models. They call them LLMs. And uh, Lambda is, I, I think that is Microsoft's um, uh, large language model. They've, of course, ch partnered with ChatGPT this year to inform Bing's search query. They paid, I think, around 10 uh, Ten billion dollars, if I'm correct. If someone on who's an attendee can Google that and drop it in the in the chat quickly to let us know that amount they've invested in. Um, Mike Murchison says here. He says we're going all in on using large language models to empower brands to deliver a customer experience that is far more contextual and intelligent. Now, we can argue those points. <laughs> that is up for debate. If you're thinking philosophy, uh, the social uh, soci sociology component of it and especially the ethical AI component. Um, but in all intents and purposes, chat GPT is being used. So let's look at some of the headlines that chat GPT has been making. Um, these are recent headlines, so in the last two days, Slack's new GPT bot will talk to your colleagues for you. Verge ran, ran that headline. Like Microsoft and Google, a uh, Slack owner Salesforce is shoving a chat G chatbot into its workplace software to automatically write simple messages and summarize meetings. I think the summarize meetings is a pretty good one. Um, my internet connection is unstable, so if you can still hear me, raise your hand. Uh, but uh, I'll. So to go on there, uh, you know, the summarizing the meetings is something for me that's fundamentally a game changer. Uh, and I see a lot of the, I see the emojis coming through. So thank you for the participation. But that summarizing meetings. Uh, automatically adding meetings into your calendar if you've integrated Google um, or um, any one of the, what do we call them, video conferencing platforms. Thanks, I Amina, for saying that we are able to hear you as well as Fatima. Um, conferencing platforms. It is one of the pains of my existence in diary management. I've now integrated the Zoom uh, plugin as well as the Teams plugin, although I hate Teams with a passion. Uh, and it automatically gives a link into my Google's calendar. So, you know, one way that AI is helping to manage the productivity side of it. Some other headlines, we're looking at how to build your own AI chatbot with ChatGPT API, a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, that's actually an advert on The Verge. So if you want to go check out theverge.com, go there and check out the tutorial. Um, TechCrunch, OpenAI launches an API for ChatGPT plus dedicated capacity for enterprise customers. So you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing the nature of of the business at play here. It's, uh, it, it also has earned itself um, a note, probably in the Guinness World Records. I stand to be corrected. I sure I am to be corrected there. But to have the most number of users onboarded, onboarded in a month uh, compared to, say, Google, Facebook, and all the other massive uh, organizations, tech organizations, which, which are part of our lives now. Let's go on to some of the other headlines. Salesforce follows. Microsoft in launching AI tools for salespeople with help from OpenAI. These are examples, actual examples of massive organizations uh, integrating OpenAI. And what's interesting to note is once Microsoft had jumped onto uh, making an official deal with OpenAI, you're seeing many, many large organizations, medium-sized organizations using this technology in order to do that. Why are they doing that? Well, OpenAI were one of the first companies to actively focus on only building conversational AI, which they did to great degree because of the billions of parameters of training data that they were able to source and just focus on that completely. 
Last one that we're looking at, which, which comes from Business Insider, chat GPT and generative AI could be stopped in their tracks by copyright law. Here's how it could play as, and, and Dennis, who's the lawyer on the call, this might be an interesting one for you. So how could it be struck, uh, stopped by copyright law? Uh, we're seeing a lot of um, articles talking about chat GPTs, the other side of it being that, you know, there's a problem with uh, presenting work that's not your own. How, how does the law be uh, uh, able to distinguish between a good quality human capability written work compared to chat GPT? But these are some just some of the use cases that you will see from a marketing perspective that you can talk about. Now, quickly to talk about this before we move on to the next slide on use cases, BuzzFeed, which you are all familiar with as a popular website uh, that serves uh, all manners of, a manner of content that's known for its virality. They announced in January this year, sending a memo to staff that they'd be working with OpenAI, again, OpenAI, to personalize content and improve its quizzes according to the Wall Street Journal. On Valentine's Day, no less, they launched their AI-fueled quiz format called Infinity Quizzes, so you can go check it out. But interesting use cases, which we now move on to around what Chappie GPT looks like. So I've just chosen three here. Three of them, customer service, research and content curation, and creating compelling ad copy. These are just some of the examples from a marketing perspective. There are many more, but from a marketing perspective, when we look at AI content marketing tools, as well as customer service tools shortly, uh, I've put those slides together. I should have moved them around, but we'll talk about them. Um, customer service. So I want, I would like you as the audience to put into the comments, why do you think something like a conversational AI tool like ChatGPT could help with customer service? Let's answer these questions, right? Put your, put your thoughts into the content, uh, rather the comments box, and we'll read them out shortly. Customer service. Now, how would this work? Now, quite a few banks have already integrated the customer service opportunity uh, with ChatGPT into their chat bots. Initially, when customer service was being automated, remember AI's, uh, one of AI's baseline uh, use cases is the, the ability for it to, to automate something. And automate means I, as a human being, don't have to do it. Something else can do it for me uh, in the background with a lot of training. The customer service around here is, what would this look like? Well, you can go onto a website, uh, build a simple uh, use case in terms of uh, having a chatbot. So you can use any number of tools available online to build out a simple chatbot that you can integrate onto your website or use the existing ones that the social media platforms offer you, including WhatsApp for business. You have experienced this already, so it's not difficult for you to imagine it or to understand it. Uh, either to custom make your own message or to use a conversation journey that the tool will allow you. In the case of in the integration of chat GPT, and if you're using it, so say you are using WhatsApp uh, at home, right, to service customers, you've got an Instagram page, uh, you put on all your your products, you photo you photograph them, you upload them, you write a piece of content, you've got a shop set up, you're able to um, you know link onto the shop the, the price of the the particular product. But now you you know customer service can be a bit difficult sometimes. Either you set up a frequently asked questions on the WhatsApp for uh, for business component, and if someone asked you typical questions that you would normally get. Um, can I pay in two parts? Would you do you deliver to the house? Do you deliver in this area? Do you deliver a fifty k's away? Uh, can you courier to me? Those are examples of frequently asked questions. You take the same scenario, and in the customer service component, you are then able to use something like ChatGPT, which is a search engine for all intents and purposes, but gives you the answers to what you're asking. You are then able to put that into ChatGPT. Um, and uh, ask the question that you're asking and find potential ways to respond to them. Copy that over into your frequently asked questions automation uh, component, either on WhatsApp for business or Facebook marketplace or Facebook shop or whatever you're using, and then be able to move that. So that's an example right there on, on the use case for customer service. The research and content creation. I was uh, very interested to hear from uh, an investment banker in, interviewed on Bloomberg Technology who recently wrote, uh, actually, he mentioned in, a, in an, a recent interview, they asked him, do you use ChatGPT? He said, yes. How do you use it? Well, I write the investment memos I send to my team every morning. I was like, what, dude? 
dude, are you actually as a head investment principal writing investment memos <laughs> to your team using chat GPT? I would expect it better, dude. But I mean, he's using these things, right? So <laughs> I also laughed at that. It was hilarious. But research and content curation using chat GPT is available. It is uh, available to you. And what does it mean? It's simply a way of how you ask the question. Now, there are many, many threads on Twitter. I would encourage you to go and read the Twitter threads uh, and you can just simply ch search ChatGPT use cases on Twitter, on Google. Research and content curation means if I need to write a piece of copy, how would I be able to do that? Just ask ChatGPT a question, uh, ask it to go and uh, find you the top 10 ways uh, in which to um, sell your product. The top 10 ways top 10 something, top five something, uh, best ways to do the following things. You know, if there's a methodology in which you ask a question. And I think that is very interesting to understand, especially when you use these search tools. Remember, all of the platforms that we understand AI marketing tools are around the input and the queries that we give it. So it's very, it's very important for you to remember, input and query comes from a human perspective. We must remember that. So that's important for you to remember. Finally, create compelling ad copy. Well, you no longer need to write uh, the short form. You know, in the early days of Facebook marketing and advertising, there was this 20% copy, 20% rule on images around uh, copy, you know, how much a copy to put into your image, how much a copy to put onto a Google ad. Nowadays, you just need to understand um, what the dimensions and specifications are around images, video sizes, including the amount of copy for the number of letters that you're able to use in a copy and simply generate that using something like chat GPT. So it's a massive, I hate the word game changer, but there we are, it is a game changer, right? Which is which is pretty interesting. Okay, so we've talked use cases on chat GPT and it was particularly important for us to focus on that because it is what we are surrounded by right now. It is what is being infused into our daily lives. Whether you use it, whether you have been used by it, or whether it is serving you, you are in all three of those perspectives. We all are. So it's interesting to know uh, know about it um, in, in its different forms. Sales and customer service. Well, this is an interesting one. And I just want to move up in my presentation here because actually uh, I wanted to talk about uh, what this means for, what this means in terms of AI marketing tools. So AI sales app software, key features that you would look for. And I'm going to show you some examples of them, right? Um, Real-time data tracking and management. Now, now, if you're looking for a particular software, this is what you would be looking for. Why are we talking about the sales component of it? It is, if we think in terms of what is the, the, the topic of this session, it is AI tools for marketing. Um, and AI, by its very nature, what did we say? It's automation. Automation, uh, the predictive nature uh, of it, and the integration ability across multiple platforms. That is why you are trying to understand this. What do you want to do for your business? You want to make things easier for yourself. You want to also, uh, in cost saving, a short of hiring someone to do something, these tools will be able to work those functions in the background. So it's working pretty much working in the background, uh, being able to generate the things that you might not be strong in uh, as a capability and helping you to align more of the functions in your business in a much uh, more predictive and automated way. That's how you're thinking about it, right? So this is why we're focusing on sales uh, and marketing as the concept. The sales and customer service component. What would you look for in an AI sales app software? Well, real-time data tracking and management. Number two, automated lead management and qualification. The presence of chatbots and integrated social selling tools. Can you see how the components you may have used separately prior to this? are all integrated into one platform to be able to help you manage customer service, look at your leads in a integrated format, in a one dashboard, and be able to still sell and serve customers on the back of that while you've got the help of a chatbot to do that because of the frequently asked questions mechanism. This is why you would use an AI sales app software. Remember again, we, what we talked about the nature of artificial intelligence. It's components that make it so. The machine learning and the data sets that it's fed to train it are precisely what are able to integrate all of these features. The real-time data tracking and management is critical because you want to be able to get as um, 
as near uh, a correct an estimate or the actuals of what you are doing, either or depending on the nature of the input of your data around what it is that you're managing. Number of customers that have messaged you, number of customers that have returned something, number of customers that want to buy, most popular product on the site in the last five days. See what I mean? So those are the, the kind of thinking that's going on in the background. And that's precisely why you're running your business. So let's look at some examples very quickly. I'm going to take you through them. I have 10 minutes left in my session, uh, and then I know we go to the last one and we go to Q&A. Okay, so content is key to driving visitors' leads and revenue, right? We, we know this. HubSpot's now introduced uh, their um, uh, something called chat spot. You know, the naming conventions in the tech industry, uh, my God, I, I think we need to get like Snoop Dogg or Eminem. You can hear from the naming that I'm doing, I'm pretty old school, but someone and not this thing that they call trip hop or whatever it is, I, I don't know what they call it anymore, but we should get someone to, to wrap old school on this, the naming conventions around here. But introducing HubSpot's chat spot, again, that name is just tripping me. Um, creating content is time resource and intensive. This is what they say. If you look at the top of the screenshot, you see that it says powered by open AI. Again, who's, who's not in the open AI party here, but they, they definitely are. They say HubSpot's AI content assistant utilizes OpenAI's GPT model to help anyone on your team ideate, create, and share content in a flash. That's pretty much what they're saying to you. So if you're familiar with HubSpot, which as a marketer you would be, um, you would know that they are very content specific. They've built a CRM, uh, which incorporates customer service at every level, uh, from the emailer to automating the, the selling process and the journey to helping you write better content, uh, and generating content for that from landing pages to marketing emails and so much more. So they say, no more rights as block, switching between different tools or learning new ones. Um, and they they obviously uh, are keen to help you with open AI. So that's just one example. Let's go on to the next one. Build a strong sales team with Gayan. Uh, actually, Gayan is one of the names of my uh, one of my friend's uh, sons. So I was interested to find that it landed up here on this particular software tool. Uh, they call themselves one of the most popular AI sales software solutions on the market. Of course they would, right? It offers a streamlined workflow and a wide range of features that make it convenient and effective tools for sales team. And like a sales force who are also integrating uh, open AI, but in the customer service side, they say that it can be used to track leads, contact info, and sales pipeline data, making it a powerful tool for sales professionals. Now, what is the, what is the concept here? Tracking. How is it tracking? It's, of course, integrating. And like many of the AI sales tools that we have, they need to integrate with existing things that you use. Those existing things are emails. So either you're using Outlook or Gmail or whatever you're using, Mac Mail. They integrate into that. If you're using Slack for teamwork to coordinate work, it may integrate into that. So once it does that, it's starting to read the data. How can you think about this? Well, if you use Gmail, which most of us do, uh, and you've booked a flight today, or you've been sent uh, a meeting request, but not a meeting request that you know is in the form of a calendar invite, but the data is sitting in your email, you will notice that in your Google Calendar, these things are automatically added. And that was very interesting for me to see. I even had an addition to my calendar from a PDF that was sent to me with data around my flight and uh, accommodation reservations. I thought that was pretty scary that it's reading my PDFs, but there we are, the, this is what it's doing. So when we're looking at these sales and marketing tools, they actually need to, uh, to plug into your existing platforms, but are, are clever enough to read that data in order to present them to you, right? And finally here, we look at something called Drift. Uh, take a look at the pink bar right at the top of the screenshot. Again, <laughs> Drift is in collab with GBT. They made it sound like they're in collab with a sneaker brand. Give your customers fast, accurate answers with AI suggested replies. Learn more here. Uh, I don't know how we can run away from ChatGPT anymore. But anyway, a little bit about Drift. Uh, they're a cloud-based AI-enabled sales software. They automate sales processes that help sales team manage sales data, assign tasks, and track results. So whether you have a small business or a large enterprise, you can use Drift to streamline your sales funnel and drive better results which I think all of us really do want to drive better results. So I'm just want to 
head back here. Just give me a second while I head back. We talked about um, the sales component, right? I have little time, so I'm going to go very quickly through the AI content marketing tools um, that you can talk about. So quickly, quickly, to summarize so far what we've talked about. We talked about AI as a, as, as a technology, what it comprises, why does it exist? How, how did it come about? What power is it? AI is powered by machine learning, deep learning, creating um, an environment within itself once it's built to be able to train, be trained on multiple data sets that allow it to do something. That's its use case. We see it at play in everything that we use these days. Why are we talking about it today? Well, it's around AI and marketing specific. And that marketing capability is around through the writing mechanism, through generating um, easy enough content for all of your digital platforms and being able to work at the back end in automated capacity for to improve your productivity. But right now, let's look at AI content marketing tools. One of them is called uh, SEO content that Google loves with AI, growth bar. Do you need an SEO person anymore? Uh, what is a search engine optimization person anymore? It might appear that it's not so, only because uh, we have um, a tool that can allow you to write perfect SEO-friendly content for blog posts, website pages and articles with AI. So go figure guys and go use it, try it out and see if it works. Remember that a lot of these platforms do have, um, what can I say? They do have uh, a free option, but they're limited. So you may have to end up paying uh, for the premium features just to see that it works well enough. But I would recommend that you do try them. And remember, like Naeem said, it is it is very much uh, trial and error. So don't be afraid to get out into Facebook or LinkedIn and speak to marketing professionals, just asking them, I've tried this methodology, it doesn't seem to work. What else could I possibly do, right? And who doesn't know Grammarly? I mean, life is Grammarly for me at this point. It's either Grammarly or my Google Calendar. I can't live without both of them. Grammarly um, has an integration into your toolbar on the address bar of Google. So, I mean, it's got integrations, uh, for, I think, for many of the search engine uh, apps that you're using, whether it's Chrome or Bing, whatever you're using. Um, I'm probably one of the best tools for writing. The AI-powered uh, desktop Windows app, they say, is it's got a new AI-powered desktop Windows app. I don't think it's new, actually. I think that, that they have apps for all the different devices and the ecosystems. So um, if you've also used Grammarly or you use it, just raise a hand, give a thumbs up, I don't know, laugh about it, something. But share, share also in the comments, just drop a note about what Grammarly means to you and whether you use it. Um, it's a pretty great tool. If you have not used it before, I am a writer, but I use it because I like to make my writing shorter, uh, punchy, more succinct. Just It's just a great tool to be able to do that. How does it work? Well, in the back end, we've been talking about AI as a technology prior to this. It's been trained on data that allows to you to read uh, how it reads it to, to check that it reads well. So it would be great for you to use in your emails and whatever else that you use. It also checks social media copy, by the way. It's integrated right through. Okay, cool. And what's the last one? Well, to round up, because I have about two and a half minutes left, let's quickly talk. One of my favorite things, automation. Uh, I love low-code, no-code tools. It's one of our company company's key focus areas this year uh, to serve our customers, which is around integrating for better productivity. One of them we can definitely recommend uh, is Quick Work. And Quick Work is around real-time integration. It says here, API platform to build automated workflows. Now imagine that you do have existing platforms that you use. Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't? Who doesn't already have, no matter if you're a big business or a small one? If you're a small business or a single person sitting at home doing stuff on your computer, but using a range of tools, Likely, you are using WhatsApp on your phone, WhatsApp for web, Instagram, Facebook, perhaps Twitter, definitely TikTok, and YouTube as a, a support mechanism, especially with SEO capability. And you probably have a website. If you don't, you're just using social selling. What, I, what did I just give you? I just gave you a very basic example of a flow of a dashboard of tools you could be using as a single person running a startup business from home. But if you wanted to really understand fundamentally how your productivity could shift by doing things that 
really eat your mind or eat your head and take up a lot of your time when you could be putting that time into growing your business. Then using tools like Quick Work, um, there are many examples of tools that build automated workflows. The example I used earlier around integrating um, your Zoom or any other video conferencing plugins into your calendar to automate uh, giving you a meeting link is one example. So you see here this user journey, it says new email in Gmail. Once that is triggered, it will send a message via Slack. Uh, it will insert that line item record in Salesforce, which is your customer care platform. And then you're able to do something from there. And that's pretty much like if you think of a customer journey when you buy on any one of the, the platforms, if you buy on Take a Lot or any other platform, you're able to uh, automatically you get a copy of your order. You will then be sent automated emails day on day of the process of your order being tracked, um, it's being shipped, et cetera, et cetera. Same principle. But this is around productivity. And I mean, customers or businesses are already using it to great degree, but why shouldn't you be able to do the same as a small business? And that is, my friends, where we leave it, as I am at my 30-minute uh, mark. Uh, thank you so much for having such great attention uh, on this session. We would not have had this webinar without you guys uh, on the session. And you can uh, check out our website, nasconsulting.ca.za, or email me, nas at nasconsulting.ca.za. And it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Fatima and the rest of the team, thank you for doing such a sterling job. And Fatima. Thanks, Ms. Jean. Um, that, you know, as you, you've mentioned and you mentioned earlier, AI is definitely taking over. So we need to keep up with all this development. And so thanks for sharing your expertise on this. I think we're definitely going to need another webinar soon um, surrounding more details. Um, so if you'd like to uh, get any information of future webinars um, or join the Minara Business Network, you can find the membership form on the um, Minara website. It's www.minara.org.za and we will post it in the chat box as well. Um, so our final topic. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Sorry about that. My Apple Watch is going a bit crazy. Um, so on its topic and our final topic, we will go back to um, focusing on how to approach digital selling. Um, like I said previously, we have Eilina uh, from um, Riyadh who will be speaking to us with regards to this topic. So Eilina, whenever you're ready, you can start. Yes, hello everyone. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a big pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me today. And uh, I think it's very symbolic especially on this uh, International Women's Day to speak about uh, impressive and inspiring uh, uh, women all across the world. So uh, I will not, I will speak more about um, their uh, ecosystem of uh, women uh, society in, in Saudi Arabia and uh, how uh, companies, I, and I mean, how, how is government supporting uh, women in their endeavors and we'll speak about several success stories and use cases that I can highlight and uh, create like a kind of vision uh, for uh, women to thrive and how to even being outside, I mean, being not from Saudi, how you can get, get access, success and access to their opportunities here. So, um, so first of all, I would need to highlight that uh, nowadays, because of the transformation that is happening in the kingdom and empowered by the Vision 2030, uh, businesses uh, and uh, organizations are um, taking uh, digital transformation uh, as a core priority and uh, female uh, leaders uh, and entrepreneurs and uh, experts are playing a huge part of it because the empowerment of uh, women is the, in, uh, in, in the heart okay, of Vision 2030 program. Uh, that uh, has a very uh, clear vision is to increase the women participation in the job market from 20% to 35%. So uh, this, this really requires a lot of support, a lot of uh, programs, a lot of uh, uh, inclusion, inclusive environment uh, in terms of uh, corporate, in terms of government perspective. So that's why this will help to reshape their, uh, the way people have access to uh, 
job opportunities and uh, as, as, at the same time, how to establish their own business, right? How to uh, create their idea, how to pitch the idea, how to raise uh, the investment and how to be successful and profitable in the market. So uh, one of the most also uh, four points I would like to mention is that uh, population of Saudi is very young. So 75% uh, of the population is under the age of 37 years old. So you can imagine that uh, this rapid growth will really empower and uh, just streamline and skyrocket the entrepreneurship, the, the sustainable development, their uh, new ways of um, uh, doing, I mean, selling and uh, uh, approaching the audience and your core clients. And of course, the core of everything is technology nowadays, because uh, all that we see here in Saudi, it's all impacted and empowered and uh, streamlined with technology use. So every startup, every uh, company that's uh, establishing or uh, already in the market, they're all trying to identify how digital transformation can really impact the way they uh, influence the, the market, the way they approach their key clients, how they uh, grow the quality and their um, service all right, for the clients uh, and how to, like, to grow the awareness of their products and their uh, business in general. So uh, uh, also to mention, uh, if we speak about some um, economic uh, business opportunities, business models that uh, exist in Saudi, exist in Saudi, and uh, what are their key kind of uh, role models and uh, the success stories of uh, women that are doing business in Saudi. So I can maybe uh, uh, segregate it to several industries. So one of the industry is uh, fashion. So uh, there are a lot of uh, fashion designers growing uh, in Saudi that are manufacturing and selling uh, really piece of art uh, products, starting from uh, clothes, uh, uh, shoes, uh, jewelry, um, different uh, homemade uh, like uh, things for homes. You know, so th this really uh, really grow their. Uh, uh, competition in the market to grow the quality and uh, the variety of different uh, products uh, within the whole country. Because as as I, as I speak, uh, it's also important to mention that Saudi is quite huge. And um, uh, of course, Riyadh is a center, but a lot of organizations, uh, private and public, trying to connect uh, women that are in these industries that are uh, very talented from uh, like other cities, from other regions, to connect them through the platform that will help them to uh, provide their products, right, in a more feasible and more transparent way with the clients. So there are several platforms uh, that have been launched recently uh, where you can uh, put your product, where you can, like a marketplace, right, uh, for specific, uh, uh, I mean, niches. Uh, as, as I speak about fashion, so we can find like different products and order them online and have a delivery in uh, like a couple of days. So uh, so the first sector is fashion. Second one is technology. So as we speak, there are very fast growing environment of uh, Saudi we, uh, women that are being number one ranked recently as there uh, a number of uh, them as a, as a founders of the startups, okay? So now Saudi even uh, started to uh, beat Europe and US in terms of women um, founders of uh, IT startups. It was recently announced during Leap conference in Riyadh that was a couple of weeks ago. So as, as we know, there are multiple uh, projects like uh, one of them is Nukta, Nukta is the, the first NFT marketplace that was launched by Salwa. She is one of the most like uh, uh, inspiring in terms of how technology can really be penetrated uh, in their uh, community uh, that is in their in the very like first implementation uh, level of uh, Web three technologies. So she's trying to uh, speak to the market. She's trying to, to understand how we can really. I mean, break these uh, barriers in terms of uh, understanding their usage of NFTs, how to uh, gain their um, awareness for this uh, product and the service and how to uh, involve 
uh, all sectors starting from the government to private to understand the model to understand the specifics right so uh as as i like also one very important comment on this is that nowadays um there is no there is not many companies that are not engaging with several sectors so in saudi it's very important to understand um the whole picture so uh, what is the perspective of the of the euro specific product and how their uh, society or how the economy is growing so you can uh tailor uh, your niche uh your, your niche client group uh based on their preferences based on the ways how they uh purchase how they are willing to uh maybe change the way they uh, do things before so because society is very young and you can play with this, you can really push ideas that uh, maybe not exist at all, but because of this uh, very like fast absorbing uh, community of young people, you can really push ideas and you can really create and uh, uh, understand uh, like do pilots, do testings, uh, work with different uh, opportunities in the market. So, um, one of the also very inspiring use cases of uh, recently, maybe two years ago, launched a uh, project is called Playbook. Playbook is a, is a female founded startup uh, from Saudi that is focusing on supporting women in the region. So they created a platform, okay, where they, they invite different uh, leaders uh, with a, a specific experience. So you can uh, subscribe on their uh, courses, on their uh, podcasts. You can have access to uh, different uh, scholarships that have been launched through different NGOs or universities. So you can have a more transparent and more uh, like very friendly environments of sharing experience between really high level leaders to uh, leaders of specific uh, sector, right? So um, I really never saw, I never, I never saw this uh, somewhere else in the world, uh, this type of the product where you can really be very close to, uh, to their uh, knowledge owner to ask questions, to subscribe to his podcast, to find someone uh, uh, that uh, like understand the market niche. And uh, this is really valuable because in Saudi, it's uh, the very fresh growing environment and you need to be aware what's happening. You need to be, you need to understand the community and you, you need to understand where to go, how to talk, uh, uh, how to approach the right people. So this type of service, I think it's like a very uh, key uh, different uh, like potential business women who are looking for uh, some kind of mentorship uh, advice recommendation or just review success stories of different people and be like very close to them in terms of uh, asking questions or um, maybe have a uh, chats or, and and whatnot so um uh, also as we speak i want also to mention uh, several uh, recent like uh, huge changes that are happening in terms of uh, programs. So nowadays we have uh, in Saudi uh, several product programs for um, uh, found for startups, where you can uh, pitch the project on the on being a different stage, uh, starting from uh, MVP or an idea to already existing pro pro uh, uh, company outside of of Saudi, but being in the MENA region, it's really. Um, like very impressive the way you can skyrocket your uh, your economic uh, performance of the company by having access to this of course and uh, uh, there are several uh, uh, foundation f f funds like uh, Saudi venture capital like wild like uh, men ventures like uh, nama ventures that are looking for inspiring talented people who have in uh, an energy to innovate to create their products uh, to test uh, theories, to uh, launch uh, new services. So I really believe that this is a key priority for any uh, uh, woman who wants to uh, have her idea like implemented in the, in reality. It's a good way to uh, uh, vi visit events of such organizations, talk to them, talk to their uh, representatives of these funds and uh, try to um, pitch their, their project and their idea in a way that it can really impact the economy 
uh, grow your uh, awareness of the product. So one of the latest also use case uh, of my one of my cl uh, closest friends uh, in Saudi, she launched her project um, uh, almost three months ago. It is a vintage uh, vintage uh, um, uh, boutique, online boutique, where it connects uh, clients and the very specific pieces of uh, clothing, uh, very like high uh, luxury brands like Hermes, Chanel, to uh, some uh, designers uh, that are not from vintage sector, but who are creating uh, different uh, like uh, pieces of clothes that are relatively uh, like very classic and uh, have a flavor of vintage, you know. So she's trying to embrace uh, this, first of all, uh, new way of uh, selling the pieces, right? Not just uh, having a boutique, but having an online store with the uh, opportunity to uh, uh, order it and receiving it in one day across the MENA region, uh, having access to the very rare piece that you cannot even find on just the boutiques or that are selling vintage because she has specific agreements with the companies uh, globally that ship to Saudi and uh, she can have a warehouse in Saudi and UAE to, um, to serve their local clients uh, with this type of pieces. And uh, uh, the beauty of this idea is that she really doing very fast, okay? Uh, not, not because like uh, um, it's just uh, happening like this, but also because society is supporting uh, uh, women in terms of uh, how to uh, like uh, penetrate the market, uh, how to uh, raise uh, funds for different series, how to uh, find your audience. So how to, for example, uh, eliminate uh, challenges with logistics. And so you, you, have, you can have answers to all these questions using like maybe one or two organizations that are supporting uh, female entrepreneurship uh, across their uh, MENA and GCC region. So I really believe that it's very uh, inspiring uh, because I see uh, women are trying to uh, do uh, a lot of like, uh, a lot of stuff across the country, being sitting at home, but uh, getting access to different platforms, as I mentioned, so they can create, they can support uh, in terms of IT substance, in terms of uh, uh, creation, in terms of uh, also uh, maybe uh, working as a team players uh, across uh, across the country because because after COVID also it happens that a lot of companies went to hybrid model and uh, a lot of startups nowadays still prefer to work hybrid. So it helps also to not to leave uh, like the place where you live and travel, but be uh, connected to your family or your friends and still get uh, uh, grow awareness of your product, uh, get, uh, I mean, ex access to the market niche. So I really believe that uh, this can, can help a lot uh, in terms of uh, tailoring their uh, specific needs and uh, the services and products that we all like uh, create together. Um, okay, do we have any questions for now? Uh, if yes, let me know. So maybe we can address some of the questions. Uh, we don't have any questions as yet, so you can continue. Okay, so um, just a second. Okay, so if uh, we speak also about some uh, key success uh, stories of uh, Saudi leaders, I can mention um, several appointments of um, um, of the very high senior positions. As Central Bank was recently uh, uh, appoint uh, Sheila Al Rawali, who became uh, one of the in the board member of uh, Saudi Central Bank. Uh, we see um, also uh, Rania Nashar, who is really supporting female in financial sector, and uh, she is uh, uh, she's handling very high position in the IF fund, uh, in in as a, uh, as a as a chief financial director, and also supporting female leaders in uh, fintech society. So nowadays, if you take any society, any any sector in uh, in Saudi, it's it is represented by a leader like a woman who uh, achieve a lot during her 
like life and uh, trying to sh uh, to share the experience connect to the right people uh to understand make you more if, like uh more insights about the market niche and how this sector uh, potentially involved and what is the strategy is about. So uh, you also, it's difficult to see it somewhere else. For example, as I was living in different countries and uh, I really see in Saudi, it's really like kind of a key insight that I can mention that every sector has its like a, a community of um, experts and leaders, uh, especially women that can really support uh, in any way, uh, if you are trying to uh, push your idea or to get understanding of the market niche, it's better to also to refer to them as they are like a, some kind of storytellers or uh, or like uh, influence uh, in this domain, so they can give you the right insight to to push your idea on the like next level. Um, is this issue? Okay, you have an answer uh, question. Um, Okay, uh, as you know, Saudi uh, is the most uh, one of the most developed countries in terms of telecommunication uh, providing services, and uh, uh, all across Saudi have very good uh, access to the internet. Uh, it's five G, and uh, the country is always trying to embrace and find new ways of um, uh, like acknowledge and grow their uh, connectivity across the kingdom. But as we speak, all centers are very well connected, and uh, we have uh, like uh, uh, different uh, services provide service providers that you can choose based on your business model, based on the price that you're looking for, or based on their maybe some kind of features that this or that telecommunication provider is giving to you. So I think there are like a lot of ways to uh, to find the right provider here. Um, Okay, so we have the second question. Do business automatically use chatbots? Okay, so about chatbots, yes. Um, uh, still, I should say that uh, chatbots are not widely used in Saudi. So uh, some, several of the business uh, communities, like if it's private business, uh, they try to have uh, this as a support tool for uh, connecting with the clients to get their feedback or to get a request from them, but uh, it's not yet used as the you know as the tool uh, for uh, banks or uh, for uh, uh, some uh, organizations that can widely use it and have a high traffic of uh, requests. So I think it's coming, and I think uh, the beauty also of Saudi is that now they're trying to use the best uh, technologies to bridge this gap to jump to jump higher uh, on them in terms of quality. So I'm sure chatbots is the, the best, one of the like good tools to uh, grow the quality of the service because it uh, really helps to understand your clientele uh, uh, and uh, to get the right, uh, maybe tailoring of the product or services based on this uh, regard. So, um, what else I should mention? Regarding also uh, maybe access to uh, like information and uh, uh, network, uh, you can also find it very easily. And there are multiple of things, uh, university centers, research centers, um, foundations, uh, accelerators, like very, very in different regions, starting from like Jeddah, Riyadh and uh, Daman Khobar, uh, all this, all these main uh, sectors, uh, I mean, regions has its own, uh, like uh, organizations that helping uh, in different scale uh, to new newly established companies or to uh, just the founders who are looking for specific information. And I really believe that this helps big time because uh, access to information nowadays is very important and to understand the market in the right way too, because all regions are developing in different uh, dimension and it's also need to be like in track and uh, understanding uh, how you can move with the strategy of uh, this economy that you're targeting. Um, okay, uh, so Fatma, do we have any more questions? Uh, let me know. Um, because from my have... side, I, th I think I uh, like wanted to highlight, uh, yes, my main uh, like idea of uh, the Saudi ecosystem. 
And uh, maybe also important fact that uh, nowadays graduates of uh, engineers and data scientists are prevailing uh, women uh, from uh, universities in, across the kingdom. It's really a big uh, accomplishment. So we now will see a lot of uh, women that are participating in their, uh, the jobs that never ever before were taken by women. So I think it's uh, also a huge uh, success in terms of uh, like local agenda. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, thanks for sharing the perspective on the social setting in, in Saudi. And it's always helpful to know what's happening around the world um, and how we can keep up with those global trends. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are going to um, go next to the q and I think most questions have been answered um, throughout the, the speaker's topics. Um, but Haman, we do have one question for you. Um, the question is, what do you attribute the low adoption of cashless pay pay payment in Malaysia to? Thank you very much uh, for the question. So I think one of the key points that we have to look at is about uh, accessibility to uh, digital banking. So this is one of the effort that we put into the ecosystem itself by the government, which we wanted to end ensure that everybody have those kind of uh, accessibility, especially in terms of digital banking and so on. So because uh, for the case of Malaysia, I think the older generation, sometimes they didn't have a bank account uh, and, uh, and, and some of them didn't have really, uh, what to call that consistent access to, towards those kind of services. So it's becoming one of the national agenda to ensure that everybody able to to be reached out able to have access of those kind of uh, services then it will uh, it will it, it's going to be one of the uh, key point or, or key triggering point that uh, ensuring that uh, the issues can be addressed accordingly thank you thank you so much Herman. Okay, and that concludes today's um, webinar. We hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've taken valuable information away. Um, like we said, if you'd like to um, uh, get notification of future webinars as well as join the Minara Chamber of Commerce, please do check the website or you can email. Um, and Amina has posted the information in the chat box. Okay, I'm now going to hand you over to our uh, other committee members um, for the closing remarks. All right, thanks very much. Uh, my audio video is very bad here, so I'm actually going to cut it. I wanted to be on video. I'll just cut that. Thanks very much, Fatima. I don't know if, Daniel, are you still on the call? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hey. Daniel, can you hear us? Yeah, uh, am I audible, Nazri? You're audible now, so please go ahead and, and uh, kick off the... the uh, you know, uh, hello. Yes, sorry. Um, so this is Dania Hanif. I'm uh, basically right now I'm in Los Angeles. So it's 1.37 a.m. here. So I pretty much have been listening to the entire um, webinar. And I'm thankful to all the speakers who shared very insightful um, views about all the topics that we've discussed today. Um, Nazreen, you can go ahead and do the closing remarks. And then I'll just briefly talk about a little about the International Women's Day and then um, about the future series of tech webinars that we uh, aim on doing. So, Nazreen? Oh, yeah, you can continue on that, please. Uh, we can, you can continue on that, please, before we close up. 
so we can let you go. I, I, I appreciate how early it is in the early no, hours no, no, in no. Los Angeles. No, no, so, no, 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 no. It's all right. No, 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 no. I, I know. Okay, brilliant. But please do continue before we finish off with the opening remarks. No, no, go ahead. And uh, you can do the closing remarks about all the speakers. And then we can talk about the uh, upcoming series of webinars that we aim on conducting. So I, I'm here with you, don't worry. Let's do the closing remarks by Nazreen. Hello? Thanks, Dania. Thanks very much for that. So if you can just mute there. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all our speakers, some of them who came on board uh, at the very last minute. I know it is not easy always to source speakers. Uh, Dania, Fatima, and Amina have been instrumental in putting it together. I uh, appreciate that very, very much. Again, uh, I said to you, I'm the chairperson of the SMME committee. While that might only be a title and mean not very much, which it doesn't, we need to put in the work, as you know. We've still got 16 attendees left here from the 31 that started out on the session. I think that's quite impressive to say the very, at the very least. Uh, the aim of these sessions are to give you as much insight as possible into building better businesses. I would have preferred to have said this at the end because I would have loved Dania to share more insight, to share more insight uh, around what we need to do uh, with our collaborations also internationally. But she will speak to you about this to end off. The final thing to say here is that at the Minara Chamber of Commerce, while we might be a Durban-based organization, we very much operate across the continent. And that, I think, is a fundamental game changer, not only for you, but for your business. So uh, thinking of signing up as a member, there's no perfect time other than now. Tell all your friends to get on board. Uh, one of the things you'd see uh, across the year is our extended collaboration, particularly across the African continent. Today, we were very fortunate to have quite a few members who brought different perspectives uh, from the Malaysian, the Saudi perspective, the South African perspective, uh, and of course, uh, different perspectives uh, from the UAE region. And we're hoping to get more perspectives in our upcoming sessions. So I thank you all very much. Go and check out um, minara.org.za. You'll get more information. And exciting news is that we have a new look website coming up in the rest of the year. So uh, Dani, please, I'll hand over to you to speak about upcoming sessions that you have in your region. Okay, uh, so just uh, briefly talking about tech for everyone, um, me and uh, the rest of the team members, Fatima, Suleiman, Amina, and Nazreen, we decided to do a series of events, and this is um, just the first of the many events that we decide we aim on doing. So um, other tech events that we have in mind are about NFTs and Web3, AR, VR, and we particularly want to do a separate session on artificial intelligence. Uh, listening to Elena today, I think it is very important that we have a separate session for uh, Saudi region itself, because, uh, you know, um, as everybody knows, all the global eyes are now set on Saudi Arabia. Um, it's a very new market. Um, there are lots of startups and uh, there's a lot of funding available. The government and the kingdom itself is putting in a lot of money. So unlike other, you know, global markets in startup space, it's not saturated. There's a lot of potential. So it's very important for global uh, young entrepreneurs to focus on that market and maybe, you know, enter that market. This is the right opportunity and right time to enter that market. So maybe we can have a separate session for all Saudi speakers from different spaces and industries to talk about the potential in Saudi Arabia right now. So this is what we plan on doing. So, but if anybody, if, I don't know, we have 21 participants still left. So maybe if any one of you, or if somebody's watching on YouTube channel right now, I'm sure Amina will leave it in the uh, YouTube description, the email addresses. Uh, so if you have any uh, topic in mind, which you want us to discuss in the upcoming series for technology for everyone, you can drop your comments and suggestions and then uh, definitely we can look into it. Um, another thing I had in mind was uh, maybe food is one space that, you know, it interests everybody. So maybe we could look at uh, food startups or, you know, uh, how we could use that as a hobby and, you know, talk about maybe cloud kitchens and other different models of cloud kitchen and um, startup potential that we have in that space. These are just um, options and suggestions on top of my mind right now. Uh, but we can look at other suggestions from 
the participants today and from the viewers of YouTube channel. Um, it will be, if not monthly, uh, bi-monthly. We plan on doing this webinar throughout this year, inshallah. So we look forward to your suggestions. And I would also like to thank Al Baraka Bank for the Zoom support today and all the speakers from different regions who have touched upon various subjects, especially Nazreen, because I got to know about a lot of AI um, apps, uh, which I particularly plan to search upon Grammarly, especially because I know I, I see a lot of sponsored ads about Grammarly, but I haven't used it myself. So maybe I should you know, start using it since Nazreen suggested that we must use it. So it was very insightful um, discussion that we had today. But um, let's have more of these events, inshallah, in the upcoming session. And maybe if the participants are active right now, we can take some suggestions right now. But if not now, then we can. you can always drop an email. I think the email address is there, right, Nazri? Yeah, the email address is provided by Amina. So maybe we can look at your suggestions and then see how we can plan things accordingly. And thank you so much to all the speakers, all the delegates who have been listening to uh, the last three hour uh, webinar. And thank you to Al Baraka Bank and um, in our Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much, guys. And then Amina has just dropped a message about all the email addresses and the website of Minara Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Nazreen, would you like to add something before we uh, close the session today? Yeah, Doc Designs were really cool in getting us all our marketing collateral out, and they they were pretty quick on the turnaround. So thanks very much to everyone. Um, I mean, as Doc. Dania, are you still with us or are we closing up yes. the session? Fatima, is there anything you'd like to say to end off as our program director? I'd just like to say thanks to all the delegates for um, being patient with us through any difficulties of um, connection or um, jumping over from speaker to speaker. And yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed today's webinar and we look forward to seeing you in the future.